Good evening everybody, it's Monday night, you know what time it is, it's the Amigos Racing Team TCR Championship. Once again in the commentary seat is myself, Super Squid, joined by the effervescent, omnipotent ART Langster. Say hello Langster. Hello everyone. And of course our host with the most, Chris R390, how you doing Chris? Alright guys, you alright? I'm very good, thank you for asking, and yeah, a good. special guest for tonight. You may know him as Ryan is bad, you know, but over here in Amigos, we know him as Cuzzy. How are you doing, Cuzzy? Evening, boys. I'm all good. Thank you. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you on tonight. So um, before we get going, uh, again, big shout out to our partners who are taking part, uh, affiliated with the TCR Championship for this season. Uh, you'll find the descriptions momentarily in the link below. And just while I arrange for those, um, we're going to hand over to Chris, who's going to talk us through the stewards report for round three. Chris, over to you. Yep, cheers. Um, it was nice and straightforward, actually, from last week. Um, there was no incidents at all from race one, which is good to hear. Um, race two, the incident with Matt Franks, um, he didn't report it. He didn't complain about it, so he decided just to leave as is. Um, if he was happy, I didn't see the point of rocking the boat too much. Um, there was also an incident with Sergeant Colon of swapping tyre compounds, um, which he did, but he did see he had made that mistake so he pitted in the following lap and rectified that mistake so we deemed that that extra pit stop was enough of a penalty um, in race three the incident at the back that unfortunately i was involved in was just seen as a racing incident which again it's it's one of those things and it just happens so great nothing really detrimental uh, overall but yeah all going well fantastic good to hear it then chris and hopefully we have some more of that um you know almost clean racing as we normally do have here at Amigos Racing Team. If you want to get involved, our link to the Discord is in the description below now. And we've got a wide variety of links on offer, only expanding as we get towards the more what will be the summer break as well. So if you do want to get and join in, doesn't matter where you're from, how good or how bad you think you are, there's something for everyone and everyone has something. So come and join along. Um, now, Kazi, over to you. Um, Amelia, about yourself. Um, if you're sim racing gt sport gt7 what kind of, what do you like to drive what's your favorite track tell us about you um, favorite track definitely be nurburgring all day long pretty enjoy that um drive anything pretty much quite happy driving it anything gl3s and fours are obviously pretty good with all the grip but i, I like driving the road cars probably the most and um, money no object the, uh, oh go on, F, go on. F, oh yeah i was thinking more of the uh, f1500s at spa might be your favorite choice there cousin <laughs> <laughs> yeah well a bit partial to one of them and all and, uh, and if you're not, not sure fussy. what he means highly recommend checking out our murray walker special uh, an event running in front of the late great uh, commentator um i think uh, Kazi had uh, one or two altercations that were interesting to say the least um yeah, Kazi, money no object place. Money in the object, what cars you have, real world? I don't know, I'd probably keep it quite simple and have something older, like a old Skyline, old R34, something like that. Sounds brilliant. Definitely yeah, have join you in the passenger seat for that one. Yeah. Um, I no, think that's the first time <laughs> I've heard an R34 being called as old. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just old as you feel, I suppose. Um, yes, bring it back. To, to, to what we've got in front of us today, Grand Christmas Sport, we can see here with Group 4s in Brands Hatch. Um, now, if you were at Brands Hatch, what would you be driving? We've got some four-wheel drives, we've got front-wheel drives, we've got rear-wheel rear drive, sorry. What would you uh, be on? I'd probably go rear-wheel drive, to be fair. Just, I'd just enjoy them a bit more. Front-wheel drive pretty gonna, good. Do you think that's going to offer any kind of strategic advantage today? Because they'll, they'll be the BMW and the Lexus, but they will be weighed down a little bit as a result. Yeah. Yeah, they might. It's, I think it'll be the tyre wear on the front wheel drive, certainly. If you can sort that out, then I think you'll stand a good chance on four wheel drive again. As long as your front tyres don't give up too early, I think, I think you'll be alright. Should be pretty good. It's quite a twisty track, so top speed's not really going to be a thing, I don't think. Do you find that you have a particularly much success at Brands Hatch, or is it one of the tracks you'd rather leave off of the calendar if you could? Um. I don't, I don't mind it, to be fair. There's not really any tracks I don't like, other than Bar First. But... <laughs> I'll say yeah, so, uh, or Mount, Mount Painorama, as I've often heard it yeah, called. Yeah, that one, I'll skip that one. <laughs> but, yeah, I quite enjoy Brands Hatch. Langston, any questions for Kelsey before we head to the race? 
Um, no, I've, I've got nothing for Tony at the moment. But I'm, did you do any racing over the weekend? No, I don't normally race on here over the weekend. Yeah. Watched a bit on telly, but other than that... Did you uh, catch Goodwood at all? No, I was watching touring cars. Uh, yeah, good. I was as well, to be honest, mate. Cars. Yeah, love a bit of touring cars. We're nice three people that are watching now, also watching the touring cars. Clearly got great minds thinking alike here, so... Uh... Yeah, well, that's good racing, isn't it? I've watched the stream so far. It's all pretty good racing. I'm enjoying it. It's good to watch. Wonderful. Well, um, I'm assuming you're taking part in the uh, Tier 1 Gran Turismo 7 Championship today, so... Uh, yeah, I'll be are, jumping over there. Then I'll, I'll leave you to it now. Then thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for, for being on, Kazi. Mm, no problem, mate. Cheers, Cheers for having man. me. And uh, best of luck. Thank yeah, you very much. Mate. Best of luck for your yeah, race. Good luck. Cheers, buddy. Nice one. Catch you boys in a bit. See you around. See you later. Right, guys, you just give us two minutes to change chats and uh, we'll get going. All right, so we're here for the man himself. We'll probably be racing in about two minutes. Um, in that case, Lanky Boy, uh, yes, who's sir. your pick for the win tonight then? Or I say, w at least one well, win out of the three. Uh, at least one win out of three. I, I mean, you, you can't say anything bad against Quinny for winning the race, can you? At least one, anyway. I think that's a very good shout. I mean, he, we, he, we really seen no matter what size he's on. He's got an excellent uh, mind for strategy and racecraft here, and I think he knows when to push and when to hold back and conserve what he's got left in the car. Yeah, um, sure. I think, and, and knowingly such, we've given him, I think it's the TC1, uh, Traction Control 1 uh, handicap. So it'd be interesting to see if that does really mean anything to me. Still set the fastest lap in practice from the looks of things, though. Yeah, outside of my own, uh, which I was just showing a couple of boys around the track uh, a short while ago before we come on live. Uh, outside of that, uh, Sergeant Colon had a good good race in, out in, in last week, so uh, we'll see what he can produce this evening. Um, and I was say actually, just jumping on that, he did do really well, because he missed the first, was it two rounds I think he missed? Yes. Due to uh, yes. <laughs> technical issues, but it's good to see him really putting a side performance on a return, on, on his debut rather. Yeah, um, well, yeah more so. Um, uh, we also as you get to quality, anyone else caught your eye? Yeah, well, Mad Lad on the pad, obviously, one of our own um, ARC drivers, Willie D. He's, um, he's got a lot to prove, and he's struggling at the moment. But, uh, it looks like we're about to start the race, and I'm going to hand over to your fine self. <laughs> oh, be kind of you. But, uh, but I do agree, I think uh, what Mad Lad on the pad, we've seen him, um, he's got great potential, but I think sometimes the strategy calls have been uh, the, the thorn in the side. So let's yeah, see how right. he manages today. He's currently mid-pack, though. Is that where you want to be in Paddock Hill Band? Oh, it's going to be yeah, Paddock Hill Ben's a tough corner to be in. He's on the inside line at the moment, though, so we'll see what happens going into turn one. Well, it's going to be dicey. We're going to run aboard there with disastrous fate. A new driver at the back of the pack. I think he's just jumped the start, in fact. So we're going to jump yeah. forward to Gina Quinney. Again, starting reverse championship order. So we'll start with our current championship leader. Mr. Tilly has had a decent get on the inside there. There's some door banging in the middle, we can see. But to the best of my knowledge, there's no one in the gravel yet. And would you look at that? A clean turn one. Beautiful get away from everyone there by the looks of things. Um, Colon's defended against Matthew Francis there. Let's uh, keep it nice and clean through uh, Graham Hill here. He is indeed keeping it clean and keeping it close though. Matthew Francis though, is looking to be a little bit under threat already. He was attacking Colon and now he's got Chris Char down the back of it. Matthew might go for a learny move here. No, he's going to leave it there as they head onto the back straight. Yeah, he's definitely it's been a great start by one so far. Nice and clean get away. Nice little uh, train formula along here as we get onto the full uh, GP circuit. So we got Sergeant Colonel in first, Matthew Fights in second, Chris Shine in third, ART Mad Lad on the pad just but I'm taking all the way. He's really gained three places off the grid. Maybe another one there's Chris Shine gets sideways, but mm, there's like nothing going there. J Lad there in fifth place, Dalton in sixth, uh, the front runner of our front wheel drive car. Let's have to see how he fares. Starting on the soft tires. Is that the call we'd make starting in the mid pack? Oh. Well, it looks like there's been a bit of contact towards the rear, but it's been well saved there. It looked like um, Nene possibly there. Oh, I did just yeah, miss that. Yeah, going back to the call on, on the start there with the soft tyres, uh, with the front wheel drive car in the middle of the pack. Uh, I would definitely gone for mediums and starting towards the middle, just because we're going to be going to burn through them tyres very quickly, um, fighting. Um, although we are starting on the lighter fuel again, so starting on the softs may not be a bad thing. Yeah, that's a very good point. And I will actually shot back to say it was the main, I think, was caught in an incident. 
and now he's to defend very ferociously there from WDK. A little nudge there through the corner as well, I think, just to help him on his way. Um, yeah, yeah Chris Daniel Chark P10. Coming up to make a move and against. Um, it looks like Sergeant Colon. Colon, but Madame Lapalica was hustling him to defend the outside. Now it's going to cut on the inside. They're going to be neck and neck heading uh, up towards, or I should have the call names, is that Graham Hill? Uh, yeah, no, it's like 30s. 30s was this one, yes. Yeah. There we go, uh, up to 30s, but he's not got the move there. So you see, maybe he's got the drag on the Lexus, because that a big V8 in the Lexus there. Full of torque, full of power, but I'm not too sure if Madame's going to catch him up. In fact, I think Chris Charles looking for the move on the inside of Colon. He takes P2. He's going to get it stopped, though. Always oh, around very wide there. Colon even wider, but a four-wheel drive Mazda should be fine on the grass there. So I'm just running wide in the background. Yes, yeah, Nene again's running wide. And we've got Dalton up the inside of Quinney. Uh, Dalton's well, he's lost three places there. So maybe he was going a little bit wide in the early section of the track as well. He's now side by side with Nene uh, heading through to Shin Curve. I'm not sure this is going to go too well. Uh, he might have kept it intact. And Matthew Francis up at the lead. Uh, by quite a way now, actually, I should say. So, I hope his fans are watching. This is the thing they want to be seen. I've only really got three people watching the video. <laughs> so, Matthew Francis will lead lap two here at Brands Hatch. We've got Chris Chart in P2, Sodger Cullen in third, and Mad Lab very close behind in P4. Tilly Liebink heads the next train just ahead of Chris R390. Uh, the BMW's there in fifth and sixth. J Lad, another BMW in seventh place. Then we've got Quinny from the back of the pack up into eighth. Dalton slipped down to ninth. Nene is trying to go up his inside and does so very nicely indeed for P9. Dalton down to 10. Newcomer disastrous fate in our, in our only Scirocco, it seems here, in P11, but starting on the medium tyres. And WDK at the back of the pack. Yeah, out of the front wheel drive cars, I think the Scirocco is definitely going to be the stronger out of um, that and the TT on the circuit today, but uh, it's much faster in straight lines. So we'll see how disastrous fate manages to do uh, a little bit later in the race. Well, see, there's a lot of change going on in the midfield. Chris Shah has dropped a bunch of places there, down into P8. I'm not too sure what happened there. Let's see if I can get a quick replay of it, because he was um, battling for the podium spots. In fact, Mad on the pad went very wide. Chris Shah followed him, and they've just been absolutely swallowed up by that pack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's Mad like just just being dropped. Chris Shah, yeah. And that is, oh my goodness me, that's the worst place to lose it, coming right out of 30s, because they've gone straight on the gravel on the exit. And now they're squabbling for P, or P6. But I suppose a good thing that they're still holding Quinny back in that battling pack, so how long are they going to keep him at bay, trying to adapt on his strategy? Yeah, we'll see how that plays out. He's started on the mediums for this race, so um, he's obviously going to try and play a lot of possible time. We can jump on board for his own with Mad Lad on the pads. He's run very wide there, just brushing the grass. He follows Sergeant Colo and J Lad uh, down through Paddock Hill, bending up the Pilgrim's Rise and Druids. But they are getting really, really close here in the midfield. I think it's only a matter of time before we see another incident, as we probably often do in the touring cars here at Brands Hatch. Yeah, Brands is a very, very difficult circuit to undertake on. There's only two or three corners that you can make these moves, but you have to be very, very close to competitive to do it. So gaining positions here is going to be forcing your opponent into a mistake. The quick car looks like on the inside there of uh, Mad Lad on the pad. He did have a done. quick look. I did see. I think Mad Lad was trying to maybe widen the entry, get that slingshot down the straight, and he is now right up underneath Sergeant Colon. But I just don't think he's going to run him again. That master, that uh, Mitsubishi, once he drops into fifth gear, it loses all its power, and it's just not got the legs. I think at the very top end, but. Now we're going to see if he can catch him through the twisties. Of course, both are four-wheel drive cars, but I think Mad Lad just has the edge when it comes to the handling. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's unfortunate, like we say, it's only a five-year vehicle, so it just doesn't have to the top end. But um, obviously there's a lot of twisties through brands, uh, so that's where it's the game time. Matthew Francis, though, to his credit, still leading the race uh, by one and a half seconds, but he's going to dive in at the pits now, as is Chris R390. Tilly reckons he's got one more lap left in the tank, as does J Lad, but he's got to hold it very tight. Colon's doing quite a good amount of fuel. He might do another two laps on these mediums at least. Uh, Mad Lad, I think, is going to dive in though, because he's running very low on fuel, so he's going to make that move early, uh, as is Chris Char for P4 and 5. So if you're Colon here, do you let those guys go knowing you've got another two laps in the tank, or do you try and keep them back and delay them in the pits? I want to try and keep them back as long as possible, but um, because the pack is so tight, in front of Quinny, with um, all the way up to uh, P2 to 3 in front of him at the moment. 
Conan's just best off to stick what he's doing, save that fuel and go as long as possible. Because them tyres are not warm at all yet, as Chris Child makes uh, a lot of understeer going in there. Uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of understeer. Nene again on the grass for a second time. I think However, going doing. back to that, possibly maybe in contact with Mad Lad on a pad because he's just let him through. Oh, uh, I see, yeah. So just swapping the places back and forth there, maybe a... More, sort of more courteous driving after a little maybe bump on the side there. Against what we like to see, we do have to investigate these things after the race. If the drivers know they've pushed their limits a bit too far, it's good to see them playing fair. Let's hope Mr. Tiddering doesn't make the same mistake as he did last time with no fuel, because um, <laughs> although he's producing the fastest lap times at the moment, he's definitely needs to drop into the pits for fuel and a fresh set of tyres. Yeah, he has to come in this lap. I think last race was, uh, you see him indicating now, so even we know on the screen what his plans are. <laughs> I think last week he probably got a bit of tunnel vision, you know, pursuing a P1 so close that he just oh, lost oh, track. Just lost that that entry, though. We've got a race into the pit lane. Chris Shaw, oh, always got bumped into the tyre wall there, poor guy, but he has just about made it inside. Uh, Matthew Francis will be the one we're going to watch, though. He's coming around uh, out the exit of Sterling's, and as he heads off the clearway, we're going to see whereabouts he comes uh, back on the track. A little flash of the lights there, maybe he's got the stream on as well. Uh, uh, we've, got that. we've got Nene versus Sergeant Colon here into Druidton and down towards Grand Hill Bend as well. Side by side action all the way from Paddock Hill Bend. Which is going to be very tight there. Matthew Francis is cleared uh, in to P5. No traffic in front of him. As long as he holds off Chris R390, he might just be a right to regain the lead. 20 seconds down. We've got Mad there. He's now taking the lead at six tenths away uh, from Nene. He's gone wide again. He loves the grass out there uh, at <laughs> Surtees. And they've well, got Colin's horses at Benny Quinney. Sorry to the there, but it's going to be a move for P3, I think, as they head up to Hawthorne, and that is Quinney up into P3, I think, right where it counts, before he heads into the pits. Um, also, I'd say to the people, if you want, I've turned up Langster's volume, he's a little bit quiet, but if he's getting a bit static, let me know, and I'll cut him back down again. Uh, so we've still got Madlad in P1, Nene in second, Quinny third and Colon in fourth. This should be the pack that's all going to dive into the pits within the next lap or two. Colon might have one more lap left in him, I'm not too sure. I don't think I'd risk it though. Um, I reckon he can get away with one more lap, but we'll see what he does. Yeah, he's going to go for the extra lap. He's going to go for one more, so he should just about have 10% of lap fuel there, I reckon, if he's timing it, uh, timing it carefully. Chris Arthur 90 is now past. Matthew Francis uh, for the lead, or the net lead, I suppose, once Colon pits. The question is, though, where are his rivals going to emerge as they head around the final corner and back onto the Brabham Strait? Mad on the pad is leaving the pits. He's under fueled on the medium tyres. He's just nipped ahead, but what's the gap going to be like heading through the corner? Chris slams on the brakes. Oh, he's going to run wide, definitely with the gravel there. Saves the spin very well, but Mad Lad has just overcut him by the slightest of margins. Worth noting though, he's got medium tyres but less fuel, so we might see him and Chris come into pits at some point soon. Mad lad for fuel and tyres, Chris maybe just for tyres. I believe the correction there, because I'm looking at Mad lad on a pad uh, on my screen showing that he hasn't changed tyres. Um, yeah, he's not changed, that's what I'm saying, I think he might be changing on his next pit stop. Uh, I don't know if, if that's wise to call that, because he's got a lot of front end tyre wear already. Especially now with a heavier fuel tank, maybe you should have changed your tyres. Yeah, I think it definitely would have been worth it just for the one or two seconds they might have put him behind Matthew Francis. You see, Matthew Francis already has an air gap of about 2.6 seconds to tell you, and he probably would have slotted right in that gap if he put the tyres on. Mm. Yeah, for sure. As, as I say, yeah, Mad Lad on the pad definitely needed fresh boots because he's already off circuit there. Matthew Francis yeah, is and obviously Chris going is quite Yeah, and Chris has made the overtake. Sh Sergeant's coming into the pits now, so we're going to find out where everyone resumes. It's After going to be interesting final, though, Matthew Francis is setting the current fastest lap, he's on the, he thinks it's three seconds, so three tenths purple, three seconds would be quite an amount, three tenths purple heading onto the final sector of the track there, he probably has had the slipstream of the two drivers in front to help him on his way, but he's, he's doing quite well actually, having started from the front, he has kept, you know, the lead pack honest, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, he's, he's kept it up there, he's, um, he's done very well so far, obviously just Chris 390 uh, obviously started off very well as there is holding up the net lead as well. Colon's emerged out of the pit just ahead of J Lab, but oh, there's an instant there. I think he's rejoined and maybe been a little bit scared by what's in his mirrors, and that's put him right off. Let's have a look and see what's happened there. 
Uh, so this is Colon's pit stop, I think. Oh no, he's, he's leaving the pits. He's leaving the pits. And just behind him there, you see his J-Lad. I think maybe on the cold, medium tyres, he's just not timed the braking zone right. J-Lad's gone, Quinny's gone. Dalton's gonna have him as well. Puts him down into P10, that is really unfortunate. In fact, maybe another off as well, because he's now down to P12. The back at the front though, we can see Matthew Francis is actually trying to have a go at Mad Lad on a pad here. I think as you pointed out rightly, his medium tyres are now looking pretty nasty. And uh, Matthew Francis wants to have a go at this. He can smell the blood in the water. Um, we got Sophie Branson saying, good luck, Matt, you can do this, we love you. So, uh, <laughs> I think, you know... Definitely a fan favourite there, old Matthew. <laughs> definitely a fan favourite. We know he's got his loved ones watching. And I think P2 is something he rightly deserves. We're almost halfway through the first of three rounds here at Brands Hatch. Matt on the pad going into the grass. This should be P2 for the yellow Subaru, and it is indeed. Good move there by Matthew. He takes P2. Chris Offy 90 now 2.3 up the road. Mad Lad demoted to third, Tilly Wink in fourth, Chris Chai in fifth, Nene sixth, J Led in seventh, hunting down by Quinny in P8. Dalton is in P9, disastrous fate, rounded the last corner there in P10. Uh, oh, Sergeant Khan's had a bit of a glitch there. Oh no, he's there now, he's in P10. Three seconds up on fate, and WDK heading onto the last sector of the track there. So we see quite a variety of strategies on offer today. Who do you think's got the best one so far? Now we've all seen our pit stops. Oh, uh, Matthew Francis and Chris at the front, they're showing off great strategy there. Both very much on equal fuel, both on the same tyres. They're, they're on a very similar strategy here. Um, obviously, there's going to be one more pit stop for, for each of them at least. But at the moment, you can't really say it's going to be anyone else at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it seems that also where the strategies have played out now, every car is in a, in a train of about two or three, really. So. I think now people have to decide, are they going to push, are they going to save, you know, is it worth trying to force an overtake, as we say, as you said yourself, the track's not very wide at all, and really, it's only about two cars wide at the best of times. It sure is, um, we've got, uh, obviously, the artist probably known as Willie Dean, Mad Lad on the pad, trying to put so much pressure on Matthew Francis into making a mistake at the moment. And we see he's still very much hot on his heels, but I think, as we, we talked about, Mad Lad with a, the traction control level 2 handicap, He's just using a little bit of punch each time he changes gear, and especially the traction out of the corners, but he's going to do whatever he can to be you know, snaking and weaving in the mirrors of the Subaru. Oh, and Chris, I see in the background, he's gone straight off. He's in the barriers. Yeah, uh, looks like he's had a disconnect or something because um, it's currently sitting in sixth gear, not, not rolling at all, so unfortunately, looks like we've lost Chris from this race. Look, Hopefully um, we don't have a full disconnect. Yeah, his throttle completely cut off and uh, he swung straight round in the barrier and that looks like disconnect because that steering was very unnatural so uh, I'm up over the end of Chris's race there down to P10, still no life in the car Oh, we've got an incident with Matthew Francis and Mad Lad on the pads just come off at 30 so. Oh, yes, he just caught that and actually Tillywick has gone round as well, I think and Chris Charles in the dirt Nene's off the track What on earth has happened here? Let me see, we can jump forward Matthew Francis so he and Mad Lad have gone side by side through 30s. Matthew Fight's gone very wide. Willie D think, has gone past him. And see all this Tilly Wink's gone. Oh, we've Chris had a full gone. We've had gone. A full disconnect. Oh, it's been a huge lag incident, it seems now. Oh no, that is um, that's the last thing you want to see on the stream. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. We've had a big disconnect there with the host, unfortunately, this evening. Hopefully we'll get Chris back soon. Wow, that made for a, for some exciting, uh, <laughs> some exciting races, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, we nearly we got halfway through the first race. Um, I think a lot of the excitement there towards the end was obviously due to the lag and the disconnect. I think what we'll do, I think maybe we'll I'll message Chris and maybe see if we can recommend a fifteen minute race to carry it on. Um, do you happen to get a, save the race order, the running order for that? Uh, I can obviously just get it straight back off the off of the stream, so um, I will see what I can do with that, and then either if we do half points to see if if we made it past half distance, or um, we'll see if Chris think, wants to do a, a half a fifteen minute race or a ten minute race. I think it might just have been half distance because uh, it was very close, but at the same yeah, we'll, time, we'll, yeah, I think just, Chris has just told us in the Discord his network has died, so if his internet doesn't come back for a while it might be worth just rewarding half points and wait for it comes back for the round two 
Yeah, we we were just under the halfway point. It was um, 15 minutes and 30, 30 seconds remaining, so it was the 14 and a half minute mark when the disconnect happened. So just before half distance, when Chris Chris unfortunately lagged out. Yeah, yeah, I think right when he lagged out, he just ticked over 15 minutes. So I think. We ought to make an executive decision here, I think. Award half points and go to race two once we can. Yeah, we'll work something out um, as soon as we can, whether it be half points, because um, I don't think we've got a system where we can actually give half points, so it will either be full points, or we'll see what Chris wants to do. Or if we just disconnect the first race, we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll look at a few things and see what we can do. Hey guys, right, right what I happened to your end then? Because I totally lost all internet on my side. Does it just go dead? So what we saw was um, was your car just kind of full speed steer into uh, uh, to Pallet Hill Bend and then just stop. Right. Everyone else kept racing and we literally ticked right. over the halfway mark and then the race cut off from disconnection. So what <laughs> we're wondering is... I suppose the options we have are you could host uh, a 15 can I, can minute I, race can I, can or... I just protest to say piss off I was leading that race <laughs> uh, we can't have the swearing on the stream I'm afraid <laughs> yeah um, I know that <laughs> uh, apologies but, uh, other, other, other profanities are available um, but no, I do apologise I think it, it would probably be best either to host a 15 minute race for the second half or just to award yeah. half points if it is possible Right, if you're a it, big Matthew Francis would, would fan, award four points. Yeah, well, I, um, I, but yeah, I don't know what happened there. Like I said, the internet dropped from my side. It just came up, network disconnected. And then I thought, oh dear. Because I knew it could be with me being a host, it would have just kicked everything off. So, um, I don't know. I don't think we can do half points. So, what, what do you think? Should we just run a 15-minute sprint, full tank of fuel, everyone on softs? I think that would be an interesting race, definitely. I think as long do as you remember, start, Langster's got a screenshot of the race order. Yeah, you're going to say you've got a screenshot of the race order, and I'll set the grid to that, and then we'll just go from that again. I think that would be good. Maybe just a, just a no tyre wear, no fuel, because everyone's on different strategies, different fuel levels. Yeah. So run yeah, a 15 we'll minute sprint, then... no fuel, no tyres, and see how that goes for race two. Yeah, okay, and then we'll just set the grid from that. I mean, we could even just do 10 if you want. It's either way, isn't it? But it's just by the time we set it all up. I think maybe 10 then, just because it is going to take us... Uh... Yeah, yeah, all right, right, let's see. Um, right, well, of course, me, Langster, this, this, will, uh, this will aid the drivers. Actually, maybe what you should do, I think, do the sprint race, but I think we'll make sure the people that were on mediums stay on mediums, because otherwise they're going to gain massively by being on softs. Yeah, I think that's fair. We'll need to put a message out then. Do you think that's the same, Langster, as well? Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I'm just checking out to see what order I've got... Um... All right, Chris, if you want to set the lobby up, I'll message everyone else what's going to yeah. happen. Okay. Because I have a three-second head start on them, on Matt, does that mean I get a three-second head start on him now? <laughs> it's like a staggered start. I think we just have to go grid start and hope for the best. But you got the M4, he's yeah. got the Subaru, so he's going to have your turn one anyway, I think. Yeah, it was no harm in asking, is there? If, you know, if, if you want to keep a distance, um, just to keep it even, do a rolling start. just to keep, Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I was thinking that. That's probably everyone. fair, isn't it? Yeah. Right, I need to hear a good shout, but actually I'm just going to change it into rolling start and then we'll just go from there. Yeah, Chris, what we'll do, we'll go into the other chat while um, Squid's still uh, streaming and then... Um, yeah, no worries, we, 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 can, I, we can discuss the grid there if you want. Yeah, I forgot it was still streaming, so apologies. That's yeah, okay, worries, we all make mistakes. We... Um, hopefully there are no children watching that one. Um, yeah. If you heard any words that you thought then weird, um, just don't say them. Yeah, uh, but for sure. Chris is going to jump just in. Just go and ask your parents what them words mean. <laughs> if they don't tell you, you'll find out when you're older. But um, if you want to go, then Chris and do your lobby. And uh, Lance, if you're going to help out, I'll just uh, do, mate, do. entertain yeah, while we're here. Yeah, I'll come back and see you in a few minutes' time. Wonderful. I'll try not to miss you. Okay, so while they go and uh, resolve things for race two, um, Let's go through what the thing's going to be again. So we're going to have, for race one, we're going to have a well, restart race. We're going to have no fuel or tyre consumption for this one. It's going to be a 10-minute sprint race. Um, it's going to be, the grid's going to be based on the running order at the time of the lobby crash with a rolling start. 
we've got message on here saying happy the air stream went down because the um he was really struggling on the mediums but unfortunately they're gonna have to stick with the tire aren't they yes i think it's to make it fair yeah um, drivers should use the tire they're on because if you're on the mediums you're now going to gain massively by being on soft tires which is the whole point of having a different strategy i need to set the time as well because i've put it on like really fine and sunny and it was cloudy wasn't it So, one more time, no fuel or tyre consumption, use the tyres you had in race one, 10 minutes sprint race, grid set from the order of the lobby crash. Um, and I think well, rolling start is about it. Right guys, I'm going to jump into the other chat, so cheers, just bear with me while I get it set up. No problem. Well, that's a slightly more eventful than I was hoping for. But um, yeah, Gran Turismo giveth and Gran Turismo taketh away. <laughs> so there's only so much we can really do there. But uh, in the meantime, I suppose um, let's, let's entertain you with uh, with Brands Hatch. So of course, uh, Brands Hatch. Uh, Motor racing circuit in Kent has two main layouts. Of course, the GP layout where we're racing tonight, and the Indy layout uh, whereby the cars skip the whole section heading from Surtee through to Sterlings and Clearways, and just to essentially use the, the kind of big dipper layout that they have there at the top of the track. A variety of, uh, of cars and series take place here. Um, the GT World Challenge is probably the main one, the biggest one internationally that we have there, um, as well as um, the British Touring Car Championship, hence why we're here. Uh, we've got British Superbikes there as well. Um, it's even hosted the British Grand Prix. We've had the Endurance World Championships there as well. And I believe, that if I remember rightly, I think there was an Olympic event or a Paralympic, Paralympic event that was hosted there about, about 10 years ago which uh, would be love to see some more competitive racing there, you know, in terms of Olympic racing at Brands Hatch. <clears throat> so, and of course, I believe even actually they've got a little rally cross loop they can use as well, which I think is in um, in Project Cars 2, I think I've driven it. Maybe it's, it's likely to be in other racing games as well. The Brands Hatch, of course, known uh, for the, the infamous Paddock Hill Bend and the gravel trap that seems to suck every car straight off into, into perils. We saw uh, Chris's car there after the disconnection and where unfortunately uh, one of the track marshals uh, lost their life um, only a few months ago. So of course that's still very fresh in our minds. <coughs> uh, we've then got Druids as well, second corner, the uphill right hand hairpin. It can be quite hard to do the break-in zone, especially when your tyres are worn. Um, leading downhill in towards Graham Hill Bend again, another lethal uh, dra gravel trap on the outside there, should you run too wide. And then Surtees, where we saw Nene and a couple of others getting very dicey with the track limits there, and another uh, troublesome gravel trap. The longest straight on the track, Pilgrim's Drop, uh, so named with the descent in the track under the bridge. Cars probably hitting about 135, 140 miles an hour, hopefully, by the time they heat reach Hawthorne Bend, which is a really tricky corner when you're going at full whack because there's so many different lines you can try and take through if you want to hug it tight. Or we go for the late apex and straighten out towards Westfield with another tricky gravel trap exit. But you can take a lot more of the inside curb for that one. Then you've got Dingle Dell, which is kind of a, a double right hand kink that hasn't really got an apex, you just kind of hug it around the outside. And then you get to Sheen, probably the hardest corner on the track. Uh, an upward, what was I saying, an uphill off camber right hander. I think I've been in the gravel trap more times there than I've been in the sand pit as a child. Sterling's the last left hand corner on the track, and right angle left puts you onto clearways in the final corner, Clark Curve, with I think the largest gravel trap on the straight. They really are using some archaic, <laughs> archaic safety systems there at Brands, but it does make for some really close racing. As we said earlier, and Lancaster, I think, has just rejoined us. Only about two cars wide at most points, so really you've got to pick and choose where you make your moves. 
Are you with us, Langster? Yes, hello. Yeah, yeah, we're all set and ready to go. If you could just give it the all OK in the chat, and then Chris can get the race underway. Fantastic. So I'm just about to join the lobby. Uh, let's let me know we're ready when you are. I'll get my keyboard. Um, send. Go. Send. All right, and as you can see, there we're going to do a 10 minute blast around Brands Hatch to get our first race out of the way. Uh, rolling start, this will be interesting. But uh, hopefully, if we check our member list, we should see all the drivers on the tyres they were using at the time of the lobby crash. We can see there Mad Avon Tiddywick on the mediums, as are Quinny, e, Colon, and Disastrous Fate, and WKD. So, Lanks, yeah, we, so we had a couple. Go on. Oh, go, on, go on, you go first. We had a couple of upset drivers that um, we've obviously changed the the rules slightly because we've got no tyre wear or fuel wear on, but uh, we've asked drivers to remain in the tyres that they are on, so it's a little bit of um, uh, an advantage for drivers that are obviously on the soft tyres now, unfortunately, but um, we can't differ from that, but we've got the race starting now for the 10 minute sprint. I mean, I mean it's a shame of course because you know, if you were on the mediums you're now going to be slower than everyone else, but of course if you're on the mediums then change to the softs. We're going to have issues with, with you know, tyre rolling, following and, you know, if you were an inherently slow tyre to begin with, so to make that advantage for free also might be construed to be unfair. So we'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, but crucially though, Matthew Francis has kept P2. So we have to see how he does today. Yeah, now with the slight change in the rules with um, it being sprint rather than having fuel tyre wear on, I think the, the soft runner and being the four-wheel drive car, we might see Matthew Francis um, take the win here. And Mad Lad on a pad is especially quick. Oh, in these Nene's conditions. facing backwards. Oh, that's oh, yes. it. That's not gone well that's, at all. Yeah, we've got Lego Cruz again. GT Sport doing its thing. Nene's going in circles now. Uh, but unfortunately, that's also held up uh, by EDK and Gina Quinney, which is a real yeah. shame. Uh, but Nene, I think at the back there, spinning around like Carly Minogue. Uh, yeah, we're backing we're out, I think we're going again. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get Well, Grand Turismo, I love it or hate it, but uh, whatever you do, it seems to hate you. So we just wait for Tiddy Wink to uh, leave the circuit. Again, rocking the, uh, the uh, wonderful Diabetes UK livery um, in respect to Paul O'Neill, of course, the former BBCC driver who um, hopefully is managing this condition uh, as best he can. That's why we could manage this lobby as best we can. It's just not going our way today. Um, Langston, if we consider Brands Hatch for a minute, where would you be making your overtakes if you could? Um, obviously going up towards uh, Druids is always a good corner because uh, there's, there's multiple lines to take through there. Surtees is another good corner to take on the inside, but you do drop a lot of speed there. Um, and then coming on to you do also the, risk, I think, t losing that place back on the slipstream if you if you compromise yeah, exactly. your entry. Yeah, Hawthorne Bend's obviously another good place if you, is to look at the overtake. You, West uh, Westfield Bend is a difficult place to overtake because you can you end up bending it. Um, Sterling's, which I think is the last left hander, yep. that's a very dangerous place to overtake, but you can get it done. It's hard part, there though, because you've just come out of Sheen, where you know it's off camber as it is, and if you've gone too wide through there, you've got yeah. to be very ballsy to go through on Sterling's. Yeah, well, obviously down clearways, you, you can get a nice bit of uh, slipstream to take you into Clark Kerr, the final corner. But uh, I wouldn't be looking at Paddock Hill Bend because of the off camber, look, because of the camber at the top of the hill, it can just you'll just understeer straight off into the gravel trap if you take the inside corner. Of course, and I think it's much better off because Paddock Hill, as we've stirred, as with Druids, you've got multiple lines. You can either hug it all the way through and, and run wide, or you can maybe try and go for a late apex and shoot straight up the hill and yeah, keep the inside for Druids. But for uh, of sure. course, that means you've got to be ultra brave and have faith that your car's going to grip all the way around the outside. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I'm quite fond of a, a late send into Sheen curve, provided you've got it lined up. But um, in the Group 4s, I'm not quite sure I trust myself. <laughs> I mean, I've been overtaken in that when we did the McGann series. Uh, it was a great, I can't remember who it was. It might be Mad Lad on a pad when he was formerly known as Willie D. And there was three or four of us that went into the corner and he just completely took me on the outside of the scene. It was amazing. 
Well, an outside move at Sheen is uh, definitely something to, to, to not be missed. All you can do is hold up your hands at that point. Well, uh, let's see, I think we've got 12 drivers in the lobby, so I think we're just about right. Unfortunately, Nanny seems to be at the back now by, by quite a way, it looks like. Oh no, I think it is all right, just the respect of the cameras are a little bit off there. But no one's spinning in circles, that would be good to go in the next five seconds. And what we're going to do, I think we're going to run on board with uh, our hero of the hour, Matthew Francis. He's got 10 minutes to claim his first win here at the TCR Championship. Um, he might be doing it early, he's had a much better run at the inside there of Paddock Hill than Chris. Is there a move on the inside at Druids? No, but he's going to run him very, very close. Yeah, unfortunately, Mr. Tindleywink had a poor start coming out of uh, Paddock Hill Bend there, and he looks oh. like he's dropped about five. I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but Matt, oh, sorry, I was just very close there. Matthew France had a great run out of Druids, going along side by side with Chris after United, couldn't get the move done, but now he's having a look up the inside towards Surtees. Sorry, but uh, he was really about to put that move on him before he even read it. No, that's absolutely fine, <laughs> obviously, he's uh, your show, my friend, and you lead the way. <laughs> Uh, I, I, it's not my show, I'm just, uh, I'm just the guy presenting it, but Matthew Francis is trying to put a show on for us already. He's really shown some eagerness to get this win in the bag. And as long as he maybe uh, kind of thinks head over heart, he might well have a win on. He's going for a look. Oh, no, he had me fooled as well there. We've got someone off in the background there. Looks like... Oh, Colon had an off, I believe. Colon might have had an off. Um, oh, I'm not sure I want to check that just yet, because I know they're fighting up the front. I'll look back one more time. I think Matthew Francis is now looking slightly under threat from the mad lad on the pad. He's had an excellent run out of Sterling. So we might just see an overtake down here. Oh, no, he's going to cut one off. Mad lad just trying to get in his mirrors and get in his head, I think. But I'm sure Matthew Francis knows better than that. Having said that, Mad Lad's had a much better run out of Clark Curve. We could see an overtake here for P2, but he's going to stick it through Paddock Hill Bend. Yeah, Matt, this is Mad Lad's conditions, uh, complete sprint conditions. He is one of the fastest drivers that we've got in ARC, so you're really going to see a pile of pressure on everyone here. Well, he did take P3, he did take P2 there off of Matthew Francis, no doubts about standing on the inside of Paddock Hill. It's a bold place to try it, but uh, they don't call him Mad Lad for nothing. He's taken P2, and that puts Matthew Francis down to third. Crucio, this has brought Chris Chai in the fight now. It's only half a second behind Matthew Francis and probably only about a second off the lead. Matthew Francis, they go for a dive up the inside there of the mad lad. You have a drag race down the straight, but he's had a compromised exit. Chris Char takes P3 and tucks right into the slipstream of mad lad. He could even be looking for a double overtake before he gets to Hawthorns, and he has pulled it off. Yeah, that's a great move there by Chris Char. Obviously managed to get a better run out of certainties against both drivers here. <laughs> They're still side by side though, heading through Westfield. He's been made a slight nudge there, I can't quite tell, but Chris is now ahead. The thing he's got to watch out for though is why he's going to have great traction in the soft tyres in that Lexus. Uh, those at the Evo and the Subaru behind him are going to have that four wheel drive as they push through. So they've got to go off at the back there. I think that was Dalton sliding off there at Schinker, but it's kept it. We see he jump forward again though. They're almost three wide heading down the final corner. Matthew Francis trying to get some pickings there on Mad Lad, but no dice. Chris Char takes P2, but Malad again, the exit run for the last corner, and he's done this once already. We're going to see him take it again. P2 heading over the line before Paddock Hill Bend. He's got a favourite spot, hasn't he, Langster? <laughs> yeah, he's obviously Paddock Hill Bend is his total choice. Definitely to get the moves done. We'll see how he gets on here. Defending heavily against Chris Char. It seems that maybe he's just he's got more confidence than anyone else heading through that last corner onto the straight, but he just can't seem to keep speed. Oh, oh, Chris, Chris is gone! Char. Chris is gone! Oh goodness me, that is so unfortunate for him. He's doing so well now down into P10. That is awful luck for him. Did he catch it on the grass on the exit? I couldn't quite see. Yeah, I think he took too much astro turf on the exit there, coming out of Druids, and he just lit the rear tyres up, and that uh, that engine spun in wheels up, and off he goes. He did, he caught just the very slightest amount of grass on the end and that was enough to send him into the wall. So that puts Madden in the second, Chris up the third. J-Lad just kind of trying to hang on the back of this trio here in P4. Dalton after his uh, quite miraculous save there at the start of the lap. Um, he's still in P5 and actually he's got a really good run here on J-Lad as they head towards Sheen Curve. Yeah, again, this is oh, he's, he's got a rear on the grass, Ooh. he's got a rear on the grass Ooh. and he's gone. He's going to make another save. Where's disastrous fate noise? Oh, it's, oh, I thought it was going to have another late move at the inside, but no. 
Tom Tate's personally the kicked in there. I was about to say Dalton's had a great start to this race. And obviously without the fuel and tyre there, that Audi TT is an absolute rocket ship. It is going to be one to watch, definitely. You see as well there, using third gear through some of his corners. Maybe he's picked this up from last week. He's got much better drive for using the higher gears, won't be spinning the wheels. And if there is no tyre wear, it just means he gets the power down that bit quicker. And again, that Audi probably only weighs about a ton under BOP conditions compared to maybe 1.3 or 1.4 the Evo, so it's going to be one to watch. He's made for that move now on the inside of J-Lad. Hug that apex like your grandma, and he is through into P4. Good move from Dalton. Yeah, excellent move there from Dalton. That's fantastic racing from him there. Took the move, very late move into Drury's, but um, J-Lad left the door open for him. He did very much so, but Dalton's going to need to catch up quickly onto this front trio. He's already half a tenth or so up on the fastest lap running a little bit of grass there, but hopefully he's going to keep this place. Jay Lad though, is right under the slipstream there. Maybe there's a little bit of a threat happening here, or a threat happening to uh, Hawthorns, but it's just too far back now, I think. So we shuffle back just a little bit as we see a disastrous fate in the Scirocco. Uh, on the medium tyres, though, unfortunately for him, he has got Tilly Wink bearing down on him, also on medium tyres, but in that BMW, We'll have to see if uh, the rear wheel drive helps him through Sheen Curve. You see the fate is just clipping the grass again. His front wheel drive is definitely understeering. So they head through the third last corner. Tilly with a great run out of, <coughs> out of Sterling's as well. We've got a drag race down to the final corner, but fate still has the inside line. Tilly with a little bit of contact there, a bit of a lag bumping, I think. You have to set so up for P7 not, over the that's line. That's always expected in the touring car races, though. So it's all acceptable. Of course, everything is definitely within the limits there. I've just noticed the fate has got the, uh, the rookie sticker on the back of his Scirocco. It's a <laughs> good note to detail there from our livery designer, Chris. Yeah, um, Matthew Francis has got that as well, which is a great little touch. So Tilly there, stuck now behind the, the Scirocco of Disastrous Fate, and he's got Chris Char trying to come back up behind him as well. And oh, we've had Mad Lad on the pad into Surtees. He's lost control of the vehicle, and it's allowed Matthew Francis a little bit of time to gain on him, but not enough. Well, it was a good save by Willie D there. Oh, well, it had to be, because he'd made up a lot of time on Matthew Francis already. Uh, Tilly Bink seems to have finally gotten past fate now for P6. Uh, Matthew Francis was having a blinder of a race. Still going to do very well to keep P3 uh, for the next three minutes. But uh, it's like further down the pack, Fate and Chris Char still going at it as they head through Hawthorns. Uh, Fate is now ahead, uh, but Tilly is at the inside. It could even be three wide there. Uh, no, Fate takes P6. Tilly is in seventh. Chris Char having a quick look up there in eighth, but no dice there. We have to see how they manage as the Scirocco of Fate goes wide yet again. At, um, <clears throat> so at Sheen Curve, and now they're headed down clearways for the fifth time. They're still nose to tail. This this battle, I feel, is going to end in a collision. I'm really nervous for these three now. Get a little bit dicey for my liking. Oh, press the replay button, bikes didn't ignore that. Oh, good one. Wrong button. There we go. <laughs> so I'm keeping the eye on the action for you. We've had Sergeant Cole on the tyre into the pits, unfortunately. He had a bit of a bad second lap, I believe. Uh, he was so far down the pecking order that he's just decided to sit this one out and get ready for the next race. No, that's understandable. Um, I was away this weekend actually at Donington Park and uh, one or two drivers, you do wonder <laughs> what they're doing so far away at the back of the pack. Maybe it's best just to save the engine and save your brain power and fight another day. But uh, of course, if you've got an audience to please, you might as well put it on for the fans. Chris Chard going to try and put it on for the fans here, heading through Surtees, right on the back there of Mr Tiddywink. Now we're going to jump on with him from behind and see if we can get some of that crucial slipstream and the power it gives him down the straight there. As he just nudged about 140 miles an hour on the brakes. Chris Shaw, very late. Contact with Tiddywink, but that puts him in the grass instead. And Tiddywink is not going to be pleased with that. It's going to cost him a couple of tenths to uh, disastrous fate there. I think it's um, worked out worse for Chris Char in that move. They went for a very late move, uh, which wasn't on, and obviously uh, he's come out worse for it. I agree. I think he, maybe not. Maybe not so much a move as maybe having misjudged a, a double slipstream at that point. But uh, of course, that's definitely left him worse for wear. So we've got just under a minute left here at Brands Hatch. I think everyone's got about time for one more lap. Chris R390 leads by 4.2 seconds over Mad Lad on a pad down in P2. We've got Matthew Francis still doing very well there in P3. 
just coming around uh, Druids now. We've got Dalton in P4, JLAD in fifth. Disastrous fate having uh, gained a little bit of time there, a little bit of comfort from Tiddy Wink following his collision with Chris Char down in seventh and eighth, respectively. Uh, Nene's not had the best run of things for race one down in P9. Oh, Chris Char's had another incident at Druids. Has he gone off again? Oh, he he's, has, he's yes. very slow, and that is there. Nene passed him, you're right there. Uh, he's trying to dive back up the inside, though, to be fair. Uh, so we jump on with Chris. Actually, so Chris, having a look this time, he's gone and kept it to the inside uh, and spun on the rumble strip instead. Which <laughs> he's Couldn't make get it up. done the opposite to what happened last time. It still spins. <laughs> Maybe not quite the rotation through the corner he was looking for. And uh, what must be said as well, actually, Gina Quinney, P11. Yeah, he's yeah. not had a great start to, the, to this um, sprint race format, unfortunately. He must have had enough as well. Uh, well, uh, sorry if you hear my doorbell going in the background there. I'm going to attend to that in just a moment. Um, it looks like we've got Chris uh, taking the win here for race one. Uh, Mad on the pad in P2. Matthew Francis up on the podium for the first time. Good job for Matthew. Langston, would you mind running us through the rest of the finishing order? Yeah, no I, uh, problem, my friend. Away. We carry on. Yeah, so we've got Dalton coming in in fourth there. Great race for him. J Lads uh, coming over in fifth. Disastrous fate picking up sixth place. Mr. Tiddly went in seventh. Chris Char finishing in eighth after a, a bit of a poor performance by him. Nay, nay, in ninth. WK, uh, WDK is coming through in tenth. And Quinny, Quinny, wow, one of my favourites for the, for the race is coming to home in P11. And Sergeant Cole, I've been retired earlier in this race in P12. As we, uh, we've got squid back by the sounds of things. Yes, I've just caught the end of your uh, running order there, so it sounds like you're doing a lovely job. <laughs> but there's our race winner, Chris R390. Takes over the sprint. Oh, I suppose it is the sprint win. Uh, let's see if we can jump quickly into their party chat for uh, an idea of what's going on there. Uh, like that will be back with you shortly. Yeah, no problem. Good evening, yeah, everyone. Like You're live well. on ART TV. Uh, please keep it clean. Uh, especially Chris, uh, having dropped one P bomb on air already. Yeah, apologies again. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. It happens. Um, so, Chris, uh, the race win for you there, but it looked like Matthew Francis was giving you a run for your money for most of it. Yeah, until we got the disconnect there, and um, Matt was doing really, really well. He sort of pushing me and keeping me honest and keeping me clean. Um, after the disconnect again, um, I just just took my time, paced myself, and luckily got my first win of the season. So um, yeah, pleased with that. Well, I was going to say, even even with uh, the sprint race, just these last ten minutes, you were being run to the edge there, and there were one or few one or two moments there where I thought you might have thrown away a second one. Oh really? So well, it was um, looking a bit tense for, I, for Matthew and, and Willie Diggs, where he's mad on the bad. But then you seem to oh, run away with that. I personally, through. yeah, I personally didn't notice. <laughs> you know, tell me what was going on behind me. I was just concentrating and staying clean and keeping, um, keep, keep trying to get the result. Really. Well, that's fair enough. That makes sense. Going to keep your eyes on the road, I suppose. Um, Matthew Francis, are you there? Just while we're talking, are you there? Hello. Hello. Uh, I believe this is your first podium in the TCR. Maybe not quite the way you wanted to take it, but uh, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm happy. It was um, obviously when it first started off, I was quite confused as to why Chris went straight on into the barriers. And I was like, that's not usually like Chris, but you know, phase for started, got a P3, happy days. Fantastic. And uh, I think uh, Sophie in the chat there was rooting for you, so she must also be very happy with, you, with your first podium, <laughs> I'm sure. Probably. All right, well, um, I'm going to leave you guys to get ready for race two. As we know, it's going to be uh, the results of race one. So best of luck from P3, Matthew. Best of luck to everyone else. Enjoy the second round. Thank you very much. Cheers, Wood. Cheers. And uh, we are back uh, with ART Langster. I think, uh, I think there was a little jackhammer in the background of that party chat. I'm not sure what's happening there. Maybe they're refurbishing the... Uh, part of the track where Chris decided to talk with Barry R. Yeah, of course. Uh, it was a bit of a heavy impact, so hopefully they sorted out with the Tech Pro down there for the next race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it'd take a bit more than tech pro to sort that one out. No, oh, yeah, uh, a, between a rock and a hard place there. So let's see what uh, the drivers are planning for this one. Obviously, we hope we're going to get a, a full length race this time. <coughs> uh, we see there, Matthew Francis is going for the softs again. <coughs> So he's going to be on the mediums, I think, the last one, unless he opts to change them in a moment. Uh, Dalton now jumping on the mediums. And what do you think it's going to be? Do you think it's going to be just a one-stop again for the Audi on the mediums? Because we know it's going to save those tyres fairly well, but not as well as the other cars on track. Uh, it depends how hard he wants to push it here with, on the mediums. I'll, I'd say it's probably more favourable to do a two-stop race here. But... Um, We'll see how it plays out. It depends on where he's got his brake balance set as well. Of course, and I think also the fuel consumption is going to play a big role in it because you know, are you going to are you going to change tyres if you're in such a light car like the Audi in the first pit stop? Even though it's going to chew through the fronts, is it worth just underfueling a bit, taking it for maybe another ten minutes? Uh, it, it's, it could possibly be worth it. We'll see how it plays out for this race. Is this the reverse grid order? Um, no, this is the order of the oh, sprint they, finish. They finished in, yeah, okay. So, yes, there's no one to be starting in fifth place. Middle of the pack, starting on mediums. It's probably the best call for him, to be honest. If you're a mid-pack, yeah. probably if you're anywhere from maybe the first two rows, you probably want to be on the mediums and preserve your race as long as you can. Yeah, I mean, I tend to start on the mediums if I'm at the very front as well, just to get them over and done with, especially with the heavier fuel load. Uh, well, I think some of them are. I think um, I think Chris was on the mediums. I may be wrong. He's on the softs now. It looks like. Um, as I say, I think I think Matthew Francis is going on the softs for the second race. But I suppose being third on the grid, he's got he hasn't got much to lose really. No, not not at all. So he's um, had a great race last time round. Hopefully. The soft tyres, it can uh, push and try and get that finish in P1 this time. So, I'm just going to let them know that we're ready when you are. Oh, we'll wait for this here. Uh, so, hopefully, they'll be underway in a few moments. You can see there again at the 50 litre fuel, so we're starting with a, with a half fuel tank. <coughs> So we have to see how this turns for race two. Hopefully we'll get a, a full race in, of course, this time. I think all our drivers are now just about hitting the track, ready to go. Um, so we're now we're going to get a full next race. Sorry? We have a couple of people change tyres as well very quickly. Matthew Francis has gone from the softs on to the mediums now. Uh, so maybe uh, trying to hold his cars close to his chest until uh, where everyone gets on track. Willie D, Mad Anapad, is going on the softs again. Uh, Quinny's rejoining the room, so we might see him, uh, sh you know, show his cars uh, in a moment. And uh, but even if you're on the front row, would you go for softs or would you go for the mediums? No, I'll be running on mediums all day long. Because uh, I know I, I get a lot of stick for, for running the harder tyre, you know, at the start of the race. But I just feel even if I'm at the front, I'd rather not burn through a set of soft tyres and have a compromised, you know, second half or the other two thirds of my of my, of my event, you know. Yeah, if I'm running a heavier fuel, fuel load at the beginning of the race, I want to be on a harder compound just to start on the mediums, uh, get them over and done with, so I can then progress onto, the, onto a softer compound later in the race with a lighter fuel load, so I can optimise my lap times. Of course, and I think also if you are starting at the front on the harder tyres, it might give you just those couple of corners where you can take a couple tenth or two off the guys behind you who are on the softer ones, and knowing that you might get that swap back on them once you all change to different tyres later. Yeah, uh, being a difficult circuit to overtake as well, it's an advantage if you're on the mediums and, and you hold people up. Uh, if they're on the softer tyres, they're just going to burn through them, so the only option is for them to pit uh, just to get out of the traffic so they can make use of the soft tyres when they come out. <coughs> well, we have to see uh, how that pans out for everyone as we're hopefully we're about to get into race two. I think we're making on maybe one or two more people to get on track. Um, it's why we're talking about circuits as well. Have you been to any any circuits, done any driving at the tracks themselves, or are you more of yeah. a spectator? No, no, I've, I've been, I've done Rocket and Raceway when it was uh, still there. Um, I used to do drifting, Essex Arena. I've been to Brands Hatch, we've driven around here, but only the short version, the Indy. Um, and what was that in? 
Uh, that was in a 350Z. Very nice. Uh, where else have I been to? Uh, I've been to Circuit de Catalunya as well. Oh, lovely. In fact, uh, my Don't girlfriend and I are planning a holiday to Barcelona, so I can see if I can stop by there and uh, have a little whiz around the track. Yeah, it's a, it's a great circuit. did that in a uh, Renault Clio Sport when I worked for uh, Renault many, many years ago. Oh, wow. Well, uh, well if I play my cards right, I might be doing it in a Ferrari F430. We'll have to see. Very good. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, I have to put that race in those plans on a hold because we've got round two. Of, uh, well, race two of round four, I should say, here at Brands Hatch. You see there, Chris Offey, 90, and Mellard on the pad, heading up the grid. Matthew Francis in third. Uh, we've got Dalton in fourth. So, again, maybe on his medium tyres, he will see slightly more success from the midfield. But let's, well, the upper midfield. We're going to jump on board, though, uh, with Gina Quinney. Uh, we you know he didn't have the best race uh, for the first time, but we'll see how he handles the second one. Maybe he's had a jump start because he's not gone anywhere off the line. Um, he's still not moving, no throttle inputs at all, so maybe he's got an issue now. Um, also an issue, it's like Matthew Francis, he's uh, been pinballed around in the mid-pack there, and now he's down to P4, maybe make that fifth. Contact Tillywink's oh. gone round. And Tillywink is down to P11, I've got no idea what's happened there. Let's jump aboard with Tillywink. So, he's P5, Francis is a little bit sideways, but he takes P3. He's doing really well, and I think, if you look behind, oh, goodness, and Chris Offrey 90 absolutely spears him. <laughs> absolutely decimated him. That'll be one for the, for the stewards to review, and Chris will be removed from the panel for that one. Uh, yes, of course. So we don't need to have any influence on it since that he may be involved in, but uh, if I were Tiddlywink, uh, I would not be pleased. I think there might be a slight red mist in the screen wash of that, that BMW down in P11. Uh, like someone has finally got away as well from the start finish line. Obviously, he wasn't ready for the start of the race, unfortunately. Oh, I might have had to jump off, do some last minute weight reduction before the start line. This <laughs> it does happen, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Francis well down in PA as a fate is going sideways there on the grass through the second to last corner, but just about holds it up. Um, and the one person who's benefited from all this chaos is Mad Ad on a pad, 3.7 seconds away already before we cross the line for lap two. Yeah, he's going to need just to um, push as hard as he can, the light fuel load, just get it going, see what he can do. What must be said as well though, WDK, who, you know, to his credit, has spent most of the races at the back, finds himself up in second place. Yeah, so he's got not too someone bad. off there in the oh, background. Uh, that's Nene, he's, uh, he's really not enjoying that first quarter, I don't think, down at the P11 now. We've got now. someone else off at Druids as well now. Oh, it's like Chris Char. I've just clicked into it to Nene as he goes off and see what happened here. Oh, he's just gone in way too hot. Absolutely way too hot. The fortunate Evo seems to handle itself quite well in the gravel, of course, uh, with a rally pedigree. Uh, we see Chris Charlier now just in front of Nene in P10. He's not having a good time either. Chris R390 and Tillywick are now side by side. Uh, I'm not too sure if I want to be anywhere near those cars. Matthew Francis needs to get away and quick. Uh, always we pray to Chris off as well. Chris is on the inside, uh, a bit of a dive, but Matthew knows he's there, had to leave the space. A bit of door banging on the way out, but Chris will take P7. Uh, and I suppose if he has got maybe a penalty looming over his shoulders, he's got to get a move on sharpish. What do you think? Yeah, definitely, because um, they're not going to take kindly to what happened there to Kidley Week and to uh, Druid, so we'll see what happens. Matthew Francis, though, almost side by side with Tiddywick through Dingle Dells. So that was, uh, oh, sorry, through Sheen, sorry. So that was getting a really tight there from those two. Uh, oh, it's it's going to be a spicy one already. I think it's good that we've now got uh, the cars all bunched up together again. We've got some nice close racing. Matthew Francis is trying to get back on the tail there of Chris R390. He's got the slip streaming, but I don't think he's got the straight line speed to get past him, unfortunately. He's done a oh, big lunge. There. Big lunge and a big swipe on the door there. <laughs> I don't think I've seen an aggressive door bang like that since uh, the police last raided someone's house around my corner. Uh, but a Chris R390 has taken that straight back up the inside. Whether if, um, I'm just wondering if Matthew Francis gave that back due to the door bang going into, into the first corner. I don't think he did. I think he was taking the normal racing line uh, quite late on the brakes there, but Chris uh, just took it off of him anyway. Yeah, so, uh, Chris is taking a move there on Dalston as well. That's a great move in the <laughs> there. Well, he's definitely going flat out, trying to uh, 
recoup his losses there. But um, Matt Lovman had though definitely uh, taken no losses here. He's doubled his lead um, in the previous lap and a half from WDK. He's still got about a second back to j -Lad, but I think eventually he will become the cork in a bottle, which is a very narrow bottle here at Brands Hatch. j -Lad, though, having to defend from disastrous fate uh, as he heads through Sheen Curve. He's gone wide onto the grass, fate is up the inside. Uh, Colon is approaching as well. Can Jelly get back on the track safely? He, oh, he parks it right in front of Colon. That's a little bit naughty and bumps him sideways. Chris R390 is now trying to get a look at this as well as they head down clearways. Chris always says yep. it very late on Colon, but he's just Ooh. squeezed it through. What a move. Yeah, uh, Mr. Tinnery had a bit of a bad move going through uh, Sheen's corner. Uh, he lost out there in Sterling, got overtaken by a couple of cars. Oh, but Chris, again, a little bit of a door bang there, but it, I say it's a robust move, but, uh, but not a bad one. He was very late in the brakes there, and uh, now he's got to try and get past J-Lad. Meanwhile, on the background there, Dalton's trying to swing around the outside of Matthew Francis, so unfortunately, I think now he's going to be finding his way down the pack rather than up it. A little bit of a nudge there on Dalton, I think, but Dalton keeps seventh. Matthew is in eighth now, and he's got Nane on the back of him, uh, who seems to have finally threaded a few corners together in P9. I'd say that, sliding that Evo <laughs> through, uh, through 30s there. A little bit further ahead, we've got Matthew Francis battling Dalton again. And we've got Chris looking up the inside of J-Lad, sending it down the inside again at Hawthorne, but J-Lad knows it's coming, he covers that one off smartly. We're going to run aboard, I think, though, with J-Lad, because he has definitely got work to do. He's on the medium tyres, so Chris Lake has got the grip through the corners. Is J-Lad going to let him send it up the inside of Sheen Curve? This would be a brave move. No, not there. But we know J-Lad's a little bit shy of that corner now, he's not had the best run through it before. Chris really catching up onto him there in the braking zone. We'll run on the rear bumper now of J-Lad. As Sergeant Cohen just behind has a half second penalty, which might means he falls prey to Dalton and maybe Matthew Francis. And then we've further ahead, we've got the Starcross Spoke versus WD, uh, WDK. Coming in through uh, Paddock Hill Bend here, looks like he's going to take the move. Oh, that is a very late send, the Scirocco. His front wheel drive, he's going to have the understeer. He does understeer. WDK trying to chop back on the inside drag race up the hill. Still side by side there through Drew's WDK should be able to have the traction out the corner and he does. Keeps P2. Good driving from these two. Yeah, it has been. I've been watching them for the last lap or two. Um, been very, very close within a couple of tenths of each other and disaster straight was just trying to work on him to get the move done, but uh, he's falling say, back down. Chris off oh Chris jumped in the pits. I was say, where's Chris gone? But he jumped in the pits, maybe he's trying yeah, to get out of the traffic. Pits. Yeah, uh, exactly He's <laughs> made some gains on them in here. I think a fifth. Uh, Tearing very wide there, Dalton gets on the inside, Tearing now with all the dirt on his tyres. Again, uh, Surtees has not been kind to many of these drivers today. No, it certainly hasn't. Uh, we've got Disastrous Fate has made the move on WDK finally going up to Pilgrim's Drop into Hawthorne Bend there. Uh, it looks like he's now clear of him by nearly a second. Uh, so maybe a poor run there out of Hawthorne's compromise line for WDK. As you say, has cost him about a second but he's still got three and a bit in hand over Nene just making his way through uh, Shinko himself and we've got this train behind with Colon, Dalton and Tillywing all queuing up for P4. I think though the only one's going to make another lap is Sergeant Colon you should see him easily keep P4 um, but he's going to change his tyres we saw he didn't do it before and that would seem to be costing him a little bit. Yeah he needs to get them tyres changed over for sure. But Nene is also going for another lap as is Dalton now Dalton I think this one's got to be careful because he's not got the same amount of fuel there as Nene, so he's really, really running it quite close here. Uh, Chris R390, having made the pit stop first, we have to see where he comes out compared to uh, his peers there in the pit lane. Good run out of last corner, crossing the line any second now. It seems like he will quite comfortably clear everyone in the pits. Uh, perhaps he didn't change his tyres, I'm not too sure. Oh, we've got people coming out in front of Matthew Francis out the pit lane here. Oh, they are very close oh, to Jaylen. Chris Charles Jaylen. made the move as well. Jaylen Tillywick nose to tail. Chris Charles has made the move uh, on Matthew Francis. Let's see if we get a quick shot of that then. Um, oh, so he's following Matthew Francis there, and we've got WDK just leaving the pit lane. Oh, that is very close, isn't it? Yeah, and just oh, it's a no, huge Chris Char dive. Goodness huge me, dive. the replay. Uh, but Chris Charles <laughs> has lost it into Graham Hill Bend and has allowed Matthew Francis back through. 
oh, and a half second penalty to boot as well. It's the last thing he wanted. What an incredible move it was on Paddock Hill. He said, you know, probably the most difficult place on the track to make an overtake. He absolutely sent it first class recorded delivery. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, it got returned to sender on the next corner. We've got Jay Lad and Mr. Tinderwink side by side through um, uh, Hawthorn Bend. Oh, it's a quick travel up there. They are, yep, just heading through Dingledale now. Uh, they're quite way behind Madame Lapad in terms of the pit stop. Uh, so I think we have to jump back to Chris Hoffman 90. He has about 20 seconds between him and the lead. Malad's already out of the pits though. As we mentioned before to him last race, underfielding the car for the soft tyres. How do you think it's going to pan out for him now as he merges in P2? Yeah, obviously he's got less fuel in the car now, so he's going to have another pit stop. But so the lighter weight of the vehicle now, the soft tyres are really going to work for him. So hopefully he's, uh, he's learnt from last time and uh, once bitten twice shy as he uh, slides that Evo through uh, Graham Hill there, I think. He did pick up a penalty, so he's got to make sure he sorts those ones out. Uh, yes, it was Graham Hill. I'm finally getting these corner names right. Um, so there's Chris that off your 90 there. Uh, probably I'll say our net P2. We're expecting Sergeant Cohen to get on the next lap as he's our last remaining driver to make a stop. Uh, disastrous fate, also hanging on fairly well, it must be said, uh, for P4, having started uh, near the back of the pack, I believe. We've got Jayleb in P5, Tillyweek still hot in his heels in P6, and another battling duo of WDK and Nene. Then we've got Chris Char and Matthew Francis still going at it for P9 and 10. Uh, Dalton. These two have joined at a hip for this race, it's literally um, build to toe for both of them. They are just almost inseparable, almost Siamese-like here. These two trying to be split from each other there. Uh, what we can see, though, Nene just has a little bit more fuel, a little bit less fuel, sorry, uh, Chris is less fuel than Matthew Francis. So it might just run to the next stint. Who's going to save that little bit extra and make it back in the pit stops? Sergeant Colon pits now from the lead. So put Madlad into P1. Chris Arthur should just about clear Sergeant Colon, I think, by the time uh, he leaves the pits. Joshua Fate should do so as well. And what about Tiddywick and Jaylab? Because this duo might just get caught as he leaves the pits. Yeah, Colon's just coming out of the pit lane now, so, oh, into traffic, this is going to be mad. This is going to be absolutely nuts. Nice. Ryan with Colon. Oh, oh it's a huge nicely. send from Jaylad around the outside. Absolutely incredible. Not only on the inside, though. And WDK! Oh! Where are the cars? Where have they gone off? Uh, it was Matthew Francis and Dalton Bolfins, Paddock Hill Ben, both went off wide into the gravel trap. Well, firstly then, I want to check out these two uh, up ahead because J-Lad, with an incredible move around the outside there <laughs> of uh, Sergeant Colon, Nene sent it up the inside and WDK thought he'd have some of that as well. Oh, a slight bump there, but... Oh, that's a difficult move to call. And uh, you also said it was a uh, Dalton was involved in a move going wide, did you say? Uh, it was Dalton and Matthew Francis both went off at Paddock Hill Bend into the gravel trap. It was separate. I think Dalton just followed Matthew off. Yeah, they both just would think went in way too hot. So uh, they both definitely lost some big time there. Uh, Mad Lad, though, making big time. Fastest lap of the race, a 130 dead. So he's really sending that Evo as hard as he can. 18 seconds up on Chris after 19. If he carries on more like this, even though Chris on the mediums, that's a free pit stop. Yeah, he's pretty much got this one in the bag, uh, Mad Lad, on the pad, as long as he keeps it clean. I say, the battle is all in the mid pack at the moment, pretty much from uh, fifth place. Back, we've got four or five drivers down to Chris Char trying to uh, battle it out for up to fifth place. Well, yeah, make you right there. We've got Jaylad at the front of that pack, having made a, a very brave move there on Colon at the pits, but uh, now he seems to be holding up traffic. Uh, oh, in P5 there. there. Was that Nene? Was that a WDK? I think you mean. Yeah, just caught the rear end of Nene there. It was lucky they um, they both survived through there. Well, he's running it close. That is now twice in two laps that WDK hasn't quite made that braking zone. And, definitely nudge someone else heading through Dewey so maybe he's got to be a little bit more cautious through there this time. Uh, we're yeah, going to run a one with Chris Charge, like he's going to have a good run on Sergeant Colon down a Pilgrim's Drop. And you can just see there the chic run of that 5 litre V8 in the Lexus. Flying past him as like he's not even there. Takes P8 but he's on the inside so I keep it nice and tight here. 
and he does come look a bit menacing in the back there oh, almost got a that front lip right underneath to defuse that lexus but he is clear lexus in p8 and just ahead uh, there no no looking to make the move on uh, j lad here what a move that uh, was side by side through shinka that's incredible driving we know j lad doesn't like it out there and i think nano can smell the fear made an incredible move let's have another look at that one then i just called out the corner of my eye but we're riding the ball with him now nose to tail side by side and uh oh i think i made that move myself in gt fusion the other week very nice to see that one yeah nano's nearly dropped it coming out the last corner then it looks like jayla's gonna have the run on him into uh, the first corner no oh. he's, he's, he's got to give him space he has backed out but he did put it in his mirrors he just gave him something to think about maybe it's going to play in his mind as they head up to druids it looks like Nene will keep that line nice and tight. I don't think we can see him make the same mistake that Chris Char did. Of course, with that four-wheel drive, it will be pulling him out of that traction zone very quickly. So he's in fifth, j Led sixth. Go on then. Uh, while we're further up the field here, we've got Chris 390, Disastrous Fate. Oh, they were a lot closer. It looks like uh, it's Disastrous Fate was giving Chris uh, a little bit more space here, but they were really onto the back and front of each other. But um, it looks like it's eased up a little bit now. They were fairly close, I do agree, but I think now if you look at uh, Disastrous Fate's tyres, uh, they're starting to show quite obvious signs of wear. I think if you may last another maybe two and a half minutes, he should be alright to stick another pair of softs on, but they're going to be a real pain in the bum to deal with in the meantime, I think. Yeah, as long as he takes it easy coming out the corners and shifting up early, there's no need to drop it down to second there. If he can upshift a little bit earlier than what he's currently doing, he'll be able to save the wheel spin and gain the traction with the vehicle. Of course, I think as, as much as uh, he wants to probably try and take P2 again, oh, he's, he's done with it now, actually. Yeah. I think that's a little bit early, you know, because he's far too early. He, soft he tires, 40 early. minutes. I want to stop it out there for another four or five minutes on them tires. Of course, because I mean, he's now going to lose a lot of time. He has to make a, another, what, a third pit stop, I suppose, at this rate. And then he will take fourth. Chris will take fifth. WK in sixth. Sergeant Colin is right on his tail, though, in seventh. He's gone for a wider entry. He's going to go for that cutback. And he does, or oh, he's, he's still side by side up the hill into Druids. But I think this is a move made for Sergeant Colon. And it is indeed up into P6. WK will try and fight it on the exit. But I think Sergeant Colon will secure this one before Graham Hill bend. Good move there from Colon. Yeah, battle with the Japanese four-wheel drive cars there, and Colon made an excellent move into Druid. Well, so maybe not so much about racing hard, but more about racing smart in that instance, which is, again, a skill that we love to show off to our guys here at Amigos Racing Team. If you want a bit of driver coaching, come to us. We've got a wide range of experts who are more than happy to share their racing knowledge. Uh, as we head just over the halfway mark of our race here, race two of three tonight, we've got Mad Ad on a pad storming away from Chris by 24 seconds. That is pretty much a free stop for Mad Lad on a pad. Chris yeah, on 90. Oh, go on. It, yeah, Mad Lad's really uh, done well. He's looking after his tyres and fuel for this race now. He'll be diving into the pits in the next couple of laps, get a fresh uh, pair of boots and enough fuel to finish him off. But uh, at the moment, we will be against him take yeah. p1 i think even uh yeah, sure. even on the pit stop so chris has got his work cut if he wants to get that race win the second one he's in p2 tilly week in third has just dumped into the pits maybe slightly early for him as well do you think yeah it's, it's probably one lap too early to be coming in for the for the pits at the moment because uh, them soft tires may not last you the entire race and you can end up losing out at the very end of the race of course, I mean, these guys, uh, most of them having just made out of our progression league, you know, they've got the grips for the sim racing, they've got a grip for the etiquette and, and the tactics, but I think there's still a couple of things they need to work on in terms of when the crossover point for the tyres is and when it's more efficient to stay out or undercut or overcut. But of course, these are all things that will come with time. We've still got plenty more rounds left here in the Touring Car Championship. And what I'm hoping is that some of these guys, that they, they watch the stream back and they listen to the advice that we give them and they can take that into their training sessions that they run with each other throughout the week and they can uh, work on strategies a little bit better just to make them a little bit more competent in what they're doing. It's not just about being the fastest on the track, it's about being the most consistent. Hmm. I definitely agree there and, and you know, it's that while of course we do enjoy commentating on these and watching the battles unfold, 
we do hope there's something that even if you're not a, a member of the Amigas Racing team, but if there's something that new that you've learned today, you know, drop it in the comments as we see a disastrous fate try and drop it on the inside of Matthew Francis for P7. Uh, but nothing going there. The Scirocco though, with a fresh set of soft tyres, this is a matter of when rather than if, I think, as he pursues that Subaru through the third to last corner. Um, but again, we said his last fate came in very early. He's still ragging that Scirocco as much as he can. And I think if Matthew Francis just races sensibly, he might well have him for the end of the race. I think he's going to let him go now, it looks like, on the inside of the final corner. Yeah, it might be worth to, oh, just letting him go so you're not losing as much time um, by defending it so much, which is a, a smart move there by Matthew by letting his after through because... I think Zarkus Fate is going to have to end up boxing again for another set of soft tyres towards the end of his race. And if we maybe scroll up the field as well, we can see if we get any more. We've got Chris off 90 uh, with a very worn set of mediums. He's got another 10 minutes to go. If we count back to him, Matthew Francis is about a pit stop behind. Which is a shame, really, because they're both going to have to pit. Because I hope Matthew Francis would at least have another chance of getting past Chris for a podium spot. But uh, I'm not sure it's going to happen in round two. I think the ones we need to be looking at here for P2 and P3 is Nene and Sergeant Colon for the time being. They both pitted, they've both got enough fuel as well. So it's only uh, Chris Charles needs to box this lap, and obviously Chris R390 as well needs to come in for fresh set times and fuel. So Mad Lad on the pad, Nene and Colon are like three for the podium. Well, you, I think since Nene has uh, finally gotten to grips with uh, the first section of the track, he is looking much more convincing for that podium spot. Um, Colin as well, he says he's run a very consistent race. He's been very consistent uh, well, since he joined us from last week. Um, of course, that minor tyre infringement, he rectified himself. That did unfortunately cost him one or two spaces. But uh, I think out of all, all the drivers on the grid, who we haven't mentioned previously, like, you know, like Mad Lad or uh, Gina Quinney, I'd say Sergeant Cohen is probably the most um, you know, strategically minded driver out of the pack. He's been very, very, very consistent. Yeah, I've raced with uh, Colon in a couple of other um, leagues that we run. He's a lovely fella to talk to and he's, uh, he's always willing to learn as much as he can to better himself in racing. Uh, yeah, I must say, from, a, from the times I have raced with Sergeant Colon, I have seen a, a real dramatic increase and in improvement in, uh, in his race craft. So. Hopefully this is just a, another step on the way to him uh, maybe joining one of our Tier 1 lobbies in the near future. Very sure. Nene's just a little bit of an off at Surtees there, but he's back on circuit. He hasn't dropped too much time. He's yeah, got to I be think careful. I saw him just kick up a little bit of dust there. Yeah, I think he's got to make sure he doesn't run his car too aggressively now because you see those front tyres are starting to, to, to crumble away now as Mad Lad does jump into the pit. He's easily going to be clear of Nene uh, once he leaves the pits, I'm sure. But uh, now he's got to just manage his race from where he is now and not concede too much ground to Sergeant Colon. We've got Chris Char and Chris R uh, at the moment, literally moving two tenths of each other, looking to battle, see who comes out the better here. Well, I'm going to follow on board then with Chris Offie 90 in the sixth stream of the Lexus. He's not going to make the move here um, at Schinker, but maybe into Sterling here. Yeah, if he gets to run out here, he might get down to the last corner now. Oh, no, we've just got impeded on the apex there. Chris Char parking that car very, very tightly on the rumble strip there. So it's like Chris Offie nice to have to leave it until the start of the next straight or the next lap even. We might even see another Brave Lunch through Paddock Hill, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it from this distance. So Dalton there diving into the pits from the Audi and that. Unfortunately for him, it's the seven minutes, so it's a weird interval. It's about a quarter of the way through your race, and you shouldn't be at the point where you have to make three stops <laughs> for, a, for your strategy. So uh, it's not quite unfolded the way he wanted to, and I think he's got another race left on the softs, perhaps, in his, in his locker. I'll have to see how he manages that one. Yeah, for sure. Um, Mad Lad on the pad's come out with a clear 15-second advantage now against Colon. Oh, so this one really is a, it really is his race to lose. I think we can see him there heading through a, through Sheen Curve on their map on the top right. So, well, it's um, a disastrous fate there, sitting in fourth, but I don't think that's going to be his final position. We've got Tiddlywink just coming up to within one second of him, pumping out the purple sectors at the moment as well. Yeah, we can see, uh, we can see fate, he's, got, he's got the fuel to go to the end of the race quite comfortably, but I really don't think those front tyres are going to last him. As we mentioned earlier, I think he's probably come in about one or two laps too early and this might all bite him in the butt. He's always just a little bit sideways there 
heading out a sheen curve. That's going to allow Tilly Wink right up on the back of him. We're going to follow on board there uh, with Tilly Wink. So we can get maybe the cockpit cam as well. <laughs> as we can see, uh, Shirocco defending aggressively to the inside. He's going to go through Clark Curry. He's going to hold it on the outside. There's contact. But well, he's just about kept it on the outside. That is incredibly brave. There's a drag race over the line. But who's going to have the bigger, ball, the bigger balls going through the first corner? Oh, my word. He's still holding around the outside. That's an impossible move from Tilly Wing. He's made it stick. Phenomenal drive in there. Goodness me. I don't think I've seen a better move than that in a very long time. Well done to Mr. Tilly Wing. Yeah, Tilly Wing now is past disastrous fate. He should be able to get a move on and uh, secure the position he's in. I've just noticed Nene drops into the pit. He did have enough fuel and the tyres to go the whole way, but he obviously wasn't comfortable with the fuel saving. So he's dropped a podium position there by coming into the pits with fresh boots and a little bit of fuel. I must say as well, as I was watching the replay there for the stream, uh, not a single bit of contact to the head through Paddock Hill, Ben. So if that's not sportsmanship and talent, uh, I don't know what is. Uh, that's definitely going to be one of the highlights for me for this event tonight. And he's yeah, now gaps fate by about a second. I'm sure we're going to see you even more over the next few minutes. We've got five minutes left to go here at Brands Hatch. Madame Lapad is in P1 by a country mile, almost 18 seconds in the bag to a, a very well-deserved P2 here for Sergeant Colon. He's got Mr. Tillywing eight and a half seconds down the road, just coming out of Sterling's there, and his astrous fate has only just given that one up. He might jump in the pits sometime soon. And so you see him weaving on the straight, maybe trying to get some dirt off of the tyres. Um, I think he's actually going to try and stick it out for what he's got left of the race, but it's not going to be comfortable. Uh, Chris R390 is four seconds down, but he might well chew into that gap there as fate's tyres start to fall off the cliff. Chris Chai is also trying to bear down on Chris R390, one and a half seconds away, but on a worn set of mediums. I think he needs to be more careful with his race and just keep sixth place. Gina Quinney is ten and a half seconds down the road there in P8. Not a good race for him, but a reverse grid could see reversing his fortunes. Don't yeah, down sure. from P9. Oh, go on. Uh, with Quinney, obviously, having hampered, being hampered down by the so-called handicap, or I see it as a penalty by having a touch of control on, uh, has really affected his race. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely seems to have neutered his progress because uh, he was he was absolutely flying, and uh, for all I can assume now with the traction control uh, hindering him through the corners on the straightaways, maybe he's had to be more aggressive on the fuel, and that's going to kill his strategy instead. Yeah, we've had Matthew Francis just boxed in. He looks like he's going to finish dead last now, unless he can push to go overtake J Led. But who knows? That can play into the favour of reverse grid for the final race. Yeah, so before we know, maybe Matthew Francis is going for it, the tactical last, <laughs> so it might be called we there. We never said that, we never said that. <laughs> <laughs> Although, uh, I think, uh, was there a roulette race we did, or was it, I uh, know it was the Kazi Super Squid uh, event we did with the reverse grid for qualifying, which was uh, an interesting well, setup for the books. Yeah, re reverse grid for fastest driver, and you didn't tell anyone, and I pumped out the <laughs> fastest lap, and then when the race started, I was at the back, yeah, cheers for that. <laughs> <laughs> any time my friend any time so uh, yes as you say Matthew Francis is at the back of the pack he may well catch Jalo but they're both on fairly new medium tyres so uh, not sure there's much more left in that battle um, I'll just see if we can try and find the battle on the map to be honest it looks like Mr Tillywink is battling Willie uh, Madad for the fastest lap he's gone 300th purple in the first sector uh, but yeah, a little the one bit wide there I've been watching is Chris R390 on catching disaster straight he's taking chunks of time out of him now because the disastrous obviously has got their worn tyres we've possibly another lap we had. We've, got, we've got this lap and one more to go I think Chris R can, can we jump down to AWS more. in the pit lane for some striking distance graphics <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're looking it's going to be an easy over so do the next lap for Chris R yeah, striking distance in one and a half laps uh, but let's have a look and see it, just if that striking distance does mean anything we've got just under two minutes left so there's probably another lap or so left on the race counter and I think actually as you say he's now got that gap down to under a second so it might well be striking distance within one and a half laps uh, we have to see how this plays into Chris's hands who um, needs fancy computers when you've got my brain yeah, exactly that the racing brain we don't need computers um, I can see two cars closing following quite close together I think that might well uh, 
be if I jump back a little bit. I think that is J Lad and Matthew Francis. They are starting to try and reel each other in, to be fair. Um, so there might be a race on the cards for the last one. Sophie Brant's in the comments saying, Come, Matthew, you can do it. Well, uh, if that isn't a little NOS button for the emotions, I don't know what it is, but Matthew's going to see that. I'm sure he'll use that to spur him on. He's already getting another half second through there. It's working, Sophie, a little bit more. We've got the move with Chris and Disastrous going on through Druids at the moment. They are literally on the front and back of each other, coming down to Graham Hill. Well, Chris, I think it's just pushed him through Graham Hill there. <laughs> so, Fate's having to defend this one really aggressively, and he's definitely short-shifting as well, I think. So, this is not going to be his place for much longer, I don't think. And Chris, again, bumping him up the hill there. <laughs> Wants to get a move on. Uh, but this is going to be a really close race now, I think, between these two down the straight who's got more power you know Chris has got more fuel he's probably going to be running the gears as long as he can is this a move around the outside oh that would be very brave around the Hawthorns there he's going to look for a cut back instead Fate's going to hug the middle of the track so there's no move happening here uh, can Chris be going on the outside there no maybe not how about through Dingle Dell they are running nose to tail here this is the last 10 seconds of the race so this should well be the last lap and I think it's going to be Willie D's race to lose at this point. Chris Holly Knight goes side by side with Fate around the outside there. That's a very brave move. He's just made it stick. Yeah, Good move, move there, there from Chris. Chris. Uh, so Matt on the pad will take one lap on his own. So Colon takes P2. Tilly Wink, well done to him as well for P3. Chris Arthur in 90 had it all to play for and has put up to B4. But again, that incident with Tilly Wink at the start of the race might well bite him in the bottom. We've got Fate with P5. Chris Char, one after him as well in P6. Nene brings back to P7 and Quinny. Good recovery from him to P8 on the grid. Dalt will take okay. ninth by the skin of his teeth. He's very low on fuel there. And that WDK should come home in 10th. We've got J-Lad and Matthew Francis take down to the end. J-Lad goes wide. Matthew Francis down clearways. <laughs> J-Lad, oh, he rejoins. Be careful with the dirty tyres here. He, he rejoins right himself. across the track. That is quite dangerous. He's going to run wide on the last corner. Matthew Francis, I don't think he's got the legs on him down the straight. That's so unfortunate. But for me, Langston, I must say, that's quite an unsafe rejoin for J-Lad there, straight onto the middle of the track. I think you still had the pace there uh, from my position from where I was watching. It wasn't as unsafe as you say it was. Um, it wasn't exactly like he was going to block Matthew Francis at all. Matthew Francis didn't have to back out of anything. So in my opinion, uh, that was fine. Well, our race winner there, all on his own sim for the last lap of things, is the mad lad on a pad. He takes the win for round two tonight. Um, but uh, definitely going to be some choice words in the steward's office after this one, I can tell you that much. Yeah, I think um, Chris um, R390 is obviously going to be one of the ones that's going to be called into the steward's office to review that incident on the first lap with Mr. Tiddlywink, because uh, if I was Mr. Tiddlywink, I'd feel quite aggrieved with... Uh, what happened there but he's, he's pulled it back towards the end of the race anyway of course of course and for all of that to only finish three seconds off of sergeant cole and i would definitely be wanting a word with the stewards i think yeah for sure because he could have had that extra position there which is more points as well we'll see what happens uh, later in the evening and obviously when we find out with stewards report next week right well that's going to get the uh, the gentlemen to mute themselves um except for the mad lad And uh, we'll get on with our driver interviews in just a second. So uh, your lanksiness, I'll be with you in a moment. Yeah, just ask Mr. Tinley what you felt was that move in, into Druids there, just to um, see how he feels about that Well, when you're interviewing the guy. Of course, so make sure he unmutes himself. So uh, I'll be back with you in a moment then. Let's get on to the, uh, the race chat. Good evening, racers. Uh, you're live with Amigos. Uh, please keep it clean. Uh, mad lad, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Squid. Um, did you notice any cars in your rear view tonight, or was it a bit of a Sunday drive for you? A little bit of a Sunday drive, I've got to admit. Um, it was a bit lucky at the start. I just had to get away from all the carnage that was behind me. I think and, uh, carnage yeah, is, a, is a very kind way of describing it. I'm going to get onto that later <laughs> with uh, someone that I think uh, maybe didn't quite benefit as much as you did. Um, what's your yeah. strategy for the next race? Because you seem to be going quite conservative in that one. Yeah, I'll just go conservative again, hopefully stay near the front. 
and um, yeah, do a bit of fuel saving. Hopefully the tyres last do another two stop. Hopefully and another win. And the last question then, but please be honest. Do you think the traction control is helping you? No. It's actually no. harder, a lot harder, especially with it being on two rather than one, because especially down the straights, it, you can definitely tell. With this track being quite a fast track anyway, you can definitely notice it. All right then. Well, we appreciate your perspectives on that. Uh, best of luck from the back of the pack. <laughs> Thank you. And um, Mr. Tillywink, are you there? I am. Uh, Firstly, I think Langstein, we our hearts really do go out to you. Uh, we've heard Mad on the Pad describe Turn 1 as carnage, and I think uh, nobody suffered from that more than you did. Um, turn but... 1 was carnage. Turn, I think we went three wide in Turn 1 at one point. I'll have to have a look at the replay again. It was it was about, I think it was about three, t maybe two or three abreast at one point, and then up at Druid's at Turn 2, I think you uh, you got decimated, <laughs> well, that's sort of one way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I'm not sure what happened there. I think two, um, two or three cars got shunted and then whoever was behind me. We definitely saw a, a car shunt into you. We're not too sure exactly uh, if there were multiple contacts there, but it's definitely worth looking at. And uh, we're ready in the steward's office should you wish to make an appeal. <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure what happened. I'm really not. But uh, either way, though, replay, like so. to come all the way back to P3, uh, yeah, I think satisfied must be an understatement. Yeah, very satisfied. I was what? looking at maybe a P7, P8 in that one. What? And uh, an incredible move around the outside of, um, oh goodness me, who was it now? <laughs> I would like to say, uh, I think it was maybe a disastrous fate, I think it was, around the outside of the first corner. Really brave there, but no contact, an excellent move. We, we do commend you for that one, good sir. Oh, thank you. I'm, I must say as well, disastrous fate. His first race with us, he is brilliant. He's really settling in. Ah, well, we're glad to hear that you got praise from the drivers in the pack as well. Um, best of luck for the final round tonight. Um, we hope you have as many good moves as you did in the second one. Hopefully, hopefully. All right, we'll talk to you guys at the end of the last race. Good luck, everybody. Okay, cheers, good. Well, um, speak to Mr. Tillywink. He wasn't quite sure that anything had even happened. Um, he yeah, just says he just got he just got exploded. <laughs> yeah, I heard the, he said there was like two or three cars and there was contact, and the next thing there was, there was a, an incident. So, but I'm sure I'm going to advise him to uh, review that in the replays and maybe get a security involved for that one. Yeah, well, uh, it will be a, an interesting <laughs> event, no matter what the results. Uh, Oh, we've, got a, we've got a new visitor here. It's for Optimus Prime as a Japanese cousin. Optimus <laughs> Prime. He is actually registered to race for the uh, TCR League, but I believe um, it was. One, is this the gentleman that was in hospital with his wife? Uh, ah, yes. Too. Yes, he did have that in the in the Discord. He was going to be missing at least one event, um, so maybe he's going. Everyone's got the green light to go, which would be nice. And of course, uh, Drifting Miss Prime or Mrs. Prime, if you're watching, uh, we do hope that uh, everything is well. Well, we send all our loves and thoughts to you guys. And of course, maybe that is Phil McFarlane <laughs> in the comments saying that he's back. Maybe he's uh, he's been watching from hospital and now he's uh, got a chance to get in on the action. So if that is you, Phil, uh, we hope you're ready to race. No, he's just left the room. Uh, he's not ready to race. Never mind. <laughs> or maybe, maybe he's decided maybe for one event he's just going to let everyone else have their fun see how they do so you have a yeah, quick look through the pits a lot of drivers on the soft tyres for this one here uh, Chris is on the mediums as it seems he's the only one on the mediums I think apart from Sergeant Colon and I think that is actually how it's going to stay it is indeed so we've got two drivers on the mediums here um what, I mean, we've got Chris going to be starting from, what's going to be, well, I think it's third last, I believe. And Caroline, I think he's in second last. So maybe it might fall into their hands. They're starting yeah, near the back of the pack. 
interesting strategy for most people to bolt on the slot, but uh, being the reverse group, we'll see what happens here with the guys. Matthew Francis is obviously looking to get away as quick as possible. I'll hand over to yourself now for the start. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Well, I think we're going to jump forward up with Matthew Francis as soon as we can, and we'll get his view heading down turn one. Oh, we've had a dropout. Oh, not another we've one. I've got lots dropouts. of dropouts. Yeah, we've had multiple, multiple dropouts. Well, maybe we are. Uh, Someone else is going to be joining the race, and maybe Drifter's Prime's coming back. As uh, Sergeant Colon slightly misses turn one. So, um, once again, we've had a fantastic start for proceedings here. Yeah, it looks like those, um, they're just restarting the order, but. I'm trying to think if it's going to save the order for the start for the reverse grid from the previous race because now they've started another race the grid order won't be correct from the previous race um, well I think because they didn't actually finish the race it's still got previous race results as they were Okay. if you check the top of your page so they might well be okay yeah yeah you're right okay I see that there there's me who never hosts the race so yeah <laughs> <laughs> You just post on the Gran Turismo official page about how you need to fix the lobbies because you're a top fan. Of course, top, I'm top fan plus number one, that's me. And um, obviously something's getting done. <laughs> I must have a voice because they recently updated GT7 and gave us a little bit of lobby action. So uh, we'll see if my arguing with Polyphony Digital still works. <laughs> well, of course, because uh, there's no way Polyphony would be listening to uh, the hundreds of Gran Turismo YouTube communities when they've got their top fans on Facebook uh, bollocking them in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, something is working, of course. It's, it's you are listening. For. Please sort your game out. Right, we're going to ride on board now with Matthew Francis. So he's, uh, he's on pole, so we saw we're getting a tactical last, as we called it, for the previous event. But let's see how he handles it from a P1 on the grid. We've got our five red lights. And we are away for race three of three. As you imagine, an excellent start from the WRX and indeed that of WDK taking the inside line for P2. Jam's been ushered a little bit wide. We shuffle back through the grid. There's been contact between j -Lad and Gina Quinney, but Quinney is definitely making up for lost time. Uh, oh, Nana had a look at the inside there, trying to sandwich yourself between those two cars but has to settle for P5. Drives are still squabbling out the back of the pack, but it seems that generally it's been a much cleaner start than we've had so far tonight. Yeah, for sure, there's only been a couple of moves so far at the start of the race. I was watching it from the mid-pack with Chris Char, just to get a view. Oh, there's a big oh, move Dalton there by Dalton. A big move, indeed, a very bold move there on the inside of Nene. He's still fighting it on the inside of Chris Char, sorry. Uh, that's not worked out for him. He's had a compromise line on the inside. Now that Audi is sitting duck in the straightaway. Disastrous fate has gone past him. Sergeant Cole is alongside him and behind him as well. Chris Arthur United is trying to get past Mad Lad. Uh, he has. And it's like Cole is still on the inside there as a. Uh, I think that was Nene running to the grass again at the outside of uh, Hawthorns. Yeah, it's a, definitely an interesting move there, but uh, he's dropped back a couple of positions through that Dalton. Needs to be a bit more careful into the break. Well, there's been an incident in front. Oh, yeah, Jay Lad's had a big crash. Oh, that's a big collision there. I think that's someone else, I think. Oh, Mad on the Pad has just about saved it, but J Lad really took the brunt of that one. What's happened to J Lad? Let's get a replay quickly. So he was in P4, so I'm assuming he's gone wide at Sheen Curve. Uh, he has indeed gone wide at Sheen Curve, and that's why he's dropped it. Rear wheels off the back at Sheen Curve, straight into the wall. And having rejoined, oh, there was contact there, I think with maybe Sergeant Colon, that threw Mad Lad off. He just about saved it though. That's a real shame for Janik. He was looking very racy at the start of this one, but now it's gone completely down the pan. Um, Mad Lad, though, is still stuck between a rock and a hard place with Tiddy Week behind and uh, Sergeant Cole in front. He just can't seem to get any space. Yeah, it's uh, difficult to say. This is a very difficult track to overtake on. And with the fastest drivers towards the back of the pack, although he's made a good move there on Cole and into 30s. Oh, so of course, I've just cut away and I've missed it. But, uh, so Mad Lad then finally passed Sergeant Cole on. Uh, Tillywink is uh, right up behind Sergeant Cohen as well, right in the slipstream. Colon's letting go. But again, we know Colon's on the mediums. Maybe he's just going to leave that battle for the pit lane rather than on track. 
Yeah, for sure. Unless there was a, an earlier incident that we may have missed where he's let you through. But, uh, Oh, of, happens, of course, I didn't even say hello to, to Bradders, who's uh, saying good evening to me in Lancaster, as has Urban Fire. Good evening, gentlemen. I hope you're still tuned in. I didn't mean to blank you. There's been so much going on in this one, you wouldn't believe. So uh, things really are starting to heat up now. Matthew Francis is still in the lead of this race, but he has got Gina Quinney hot on his heels. We might see another wonderful Subaru Mitsubishi battle as we head over the line. Where has Jimmy Quinney come from? He, where was he in the previous race? Um, I think he was 8th, if I remember rightly. He didn't have a great finish, but he must have started then P4. Yeah, so he's had a great start for this race here. And there's and going I to think, be a good battle with him and Matthew Francis. And I was saying, well, you say that, but I think you've just cursed it. He's right the inside already. A horrible run with Matthew Francis there. <laughs> Nudged wide through uh, towards through Druids there. Give back as much as he got, but Quinny around the outside. Now into the lead, and Matthew Francis going to get attacked by Nene as well. So we got the Mitsubishi Subaru, Mitsubishi Subaru in the front four, and he really is uh, under threat. As Urban Fire asks, "Can we get a woof from the big dog?" Woof woof. <laughs> what do you want to? Oh. <laughs> yeah, some say uh, he's part canine. So there, Quinny is in the lead. Matthew Francis now having to defend P2. Uh, Nene third, WDK fourth. Disastrous Fate is still trying to get on the tail of this front four there in P5. He's got Chris Chaff Company in P6 and Chris R390 right up behind him again uh, in P7. So he's really not leaving much on the table. Uh, he's been pushing hard all evening, so maybe a little bit too hard potentially. <laughs> Urban Fire's got the, the crying emoji saying that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for Mr. Urban. <laughs> I suppose, you know, it's, it's the little things, the easy pleasures in life. As uh, we see Matthew Francis really caught there. Chris Shard diving out the traffic. Maybe he can see an accident coming in our near future. But Matthew Francis really have to defend there from Nene. As uh, Phil says that he's spectating that's that we drift him as then. He's in the party chat and just watching the race. So I hope you're enjoying it, Phil. Uh, Matthew's really under pressure here. He's going to move the inside of Quinny. There's a little bit of contact there. He's been definitely been nudged outside. Matthew Francis is not happy to be off the top spot there and out of the spotlight. And Fate is going to try and make gains on this as well. The inside of Nene. I'm oh, sorry, of Quinny, sorry. And he does uh, up in the P... Oh, yes, he's, yes, he's given that back. Maybe a little bit of a too hard a move. Two Evos going side by side now. And oh, WDK has lost it on the exit. Oh, he was doing so well. He's now got rear damage. He's going to keep it wide, heading out of uh, Surtees, fortunately. Oh, but I think he's just got maybe a bit thrown off by all the chaos going around him. He's lost his yeah, racing zone. There's a hell of a lot going on. There's a couple of things that we've missed. We've had Dalton being overtaken by Madlad and Tiddlywink. Uh, Tiddlywink made a move at Paddock Hill. And I believe Madlad then made a move into Druids. And again, I don't want to incriminate at Chris R390, but I think oh, it wasn't his fault. Oh, just made a great move with this r straight through there. Oh, I've just missed Madlad. I'm going to get that one in a second then. But I think uh, Madlad's maybe... going to be on it with Tiddlywink here as well. Oh, wait, two moves in two corners, right? As Matthew Francis gets and sideways. And Francis as well. Three moves in three corners. Mad Lad is on a mad one. Let's get a look and see where he was making his moves in. So Mad Lad on Tiddlywink. We see they've all bunched up. They're all so tight through this first section there. And Mad Lad is just breezing past everyone like their time trial ghosts. Inside of Tiddlywink there, through Dingledale. Right up onto the back of the... Uh, sorry, past Dostra Fate, sorry. Back on Tiddlywink through a uh, <laughs> uh, sheen curve. And then Sterling takes him on the inside, and then he gets uh, Matthew Francis on the way out. Yeah, I think the problem that's happened with Matthew Francis is that he's had a penalty to burn, and with the penalty burn, it's very difficult to get rid of here at Grand Brown's Hatch. So he's having to break a lot earlier, but it looks like Mr. Tindrick's off there at Brown Hill Bend. Oh, he did just go off there, mad lad, trying to make a... I think he lost the place to disastrous fate around the rest of the lap, but now he's back into P3. Dalton is trying to get involved in this as well there, uh, in P6. Matthew Francis lost about five places. Uh, in half a lap, and Dalton now is looking to make some inroads on this battling, uh, well, say, Quintet, I think. Yeah, Matthew Francis has lost all his positions because of that simple one second penalty that he picked up. Unfortunately, where he's had to break a lot earlier has allowed his opposition to pass him in some heavier breaking zones. Dalton's running on the inside of Mad Lab, trying to usher him a little bit wide, but no, but the traction of the Evo allowed him to pull away from the Audi one more time. <laughs> As I was thinking earlier as well, when WDK went off, I think he got a bit scared of what was going on in front of him. And always oh, a bit of contact there from Matthew Francis. Oh, it's saved by Dalton. 
Um, I think he got a little bit scared maybe with Chris on the inside and all the things going on around him, he's just not kept his eyes on, uh, on the brakes. And that cost him, unfortunately, about six places. I really feel for the guy. Urban Fire saying, this is brilliant racing. You've got to love Browns. That's uh, Matthew Francis. Uh, dives at the pits there. Base change tyres, as has Tilly Week. And disastrous fate for their first stop to the evening. Oh, Again, no, a, little, no, no. A, a little bit early, oh. isn't it? About two minutes early, would you think? A lap early. the pit stops. No, yeah. no, some of the guys have got no fuel left. Oh, I guess they've been pushing very hard then for the start they've of this race. They've been pushing, yeah, they, they're literally coming in with between 2 and 4% fuel, so they never had enough to get around another lap. And at Nene, he's definitely pushing his fuel as close as he can as well, right down in that low red. I'm sure we're going to see Sergeant Carroll do another lap or two, as he has been for this evening. Uh, but uh, it's going to come down to the wire in this first round of pit stops, I think. Uh, Mad on the pad, it's very low in fuel as well. Uh, as he's Dalton, Colon's probably got enough maybe for one more lap if he's maybe a bit more frugal. Short shift with the sip with the Audi, he should be fine for another lap, I'm sure. And um, Chris Char uh, has made a pit stop, he's down in sixth place. Uh, as did Tiddy Wink and Matthew Francis and Disastrous Fate. Oh, WDK battling with Jayla there on the exit of Graham Hill. <clears throat> but uh, Jayla has the inside there heading into uh, Surtees. I think we're out of all the pit stops that we've got here. Possibly Colon's going to be the only one that's going to go the extra lap. Well, I think, and I think that'd probably be the strategy to really go for it. It's always got to be pitting coming out alongside each other. And so Nene makes a move. Oh, I thought it was going to be a move to the inside of the pit lane. But I know Quinny's going to go for one more lap. Do you remember Sebastian Vettel overtaking two cars on the pit road? <laughs> oh, yes. That was, uh, it was close. There's a very tactical driving going on there. So Quinny and Sergeant Carolyn going for one more lap. Uh, so Chris Char is going to be our lead driver to have made a pit stop earlier this race. If Carolyn's smart here and he can save the fuel for this next spin, uh, take full, full take the fuel, wasting mediums, he can go the whole way, but it's down to him to save the fuel. Yeah, it's a lot of fuel to save. You have to save fuel for, well, I'd say, the better part of 20 minutes, really. But uh, I think yeah, the guy's only started with half a tank of fuel, so I guess it is possible. It, it is definitely possible. It's just down to him if he wants to do it. I've been watching him. He has been short shifting at some places. It, he definitely can make this one strategy work for him. We'll have to see how he how he uh, approaches his pit phase then in the next couple of laps. So Christian running a little bit wide there, but he has cleared the guys behind him uh, in the pits, and he has also got another tenth in his pocket on Mad Lad's fastest lap. So this might well be an interesting one for Chris Char, who's not at the best run of form in the past few races. He's now half a second purple. So he really is giving it everything he's got to try and make some inroads on those who are yet to stop. It's 18 seconds to the front, uh, or 18 seconds to Quiddy, 14, 15 to Sergeant Colon. So you might just jump them if he gets this last sector right. Yeah, he should definitely come out a few seconds ahead of these guys. It all depends on how much fuel they take on board, but if I was both of them, you want to be stopping, refueling completely and see if you can go the whole way. There's a possibility as well, obviously this being Quinny's first stop, that he's made them soft tyres really work for him in the first 10 minutes spin, so we could go all the way if he looks after him as well. It's possible, if we jump to Quinny though, those soft tyres, yeah, have got almost nowhere on them at all. Um, I think it'd be a lot to ask to ask him to do a whole 20 minutes on the soft tyres, but if he is patient, he might just get him to work. Let's have a look. Let's put a fresh set on and a full tank of fuel. So maybe he's going to go for it. Yeah, there's a possibility he's going to go for it. And this could work out really well here against the guys that are doing the two-stop strategy. We've got Matthew Francis off into turn one. Oh, I've just seen that in the, on the radar. Yes. What has happened there? Let's see if we can get another shot of that. Oh, I'd assume he's just gone in a little bit hot. Oh, I see. I think he's got a bit scared. Quinny coming out the pits. He's had to run wide. Not sure if he's ghosting. Let's put him in the gravel instead. I, oh, I do feel for him. You can't do anything about that at all. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate mistake. It's very difficult when you see someone coming out of the pits. It's just easy just to lift off and break lightly and just to allow them to come out the pits in front of you rather than um, trying to give them the space. Agreed. And what I was going to say, actually, relating to it to Quinny, because of course Mackie Francis didn't get around him, I was going to say he's come out into a lovely bit of clean air there, but that's only because it was vacated. <laughs> so it uh, seems we still got Chris Char there in the lead, but all that time he took out of Mad Lad on the pad is starting to come back at him now. As Mad Lad 
has got about the same amount of fuel, slightly better tyres. So these two might all be pitting at the same kind of time. So now it's it's all down to, I think, inherent race pace. These two are definitely going to go for another pit stop, I'm sure. Yeah, he's going to be looking in around about um, six or seven laps time that both of these guys will be dropping into the pits. I say a, a little bit of fuel. A mad lad dropping into 129s. Oh, so he's Mr. pushing Tiddly harder Wings than anyone. Mr. Tiddly Wings has dropped off and just let two people through. Obviously, we get a replay of that one. I just missed it. Uh, so he's been, he's got Nene right behind him. Nene, I think, has made slight contact twice through that corner. Uh, Tiddly Wing, oh, he just put, he kept his foot down through the last corner and then ended up on the grass because he just couldn't get the car turned in. But I'm not too sure where that falls on. I mean, it's, it's debatable because he was bumped twice by Nene, but he did choose to keep his foot down out of the corner. At that point, he was on his own. Yeah, and then he's put himself out wide, but it obviously depends if uh, the pinball effectors has pushed him out wider uh, than expected as well, so that <laughs> may have to be reviewed. Well, he's going to blaze past Nene down the straight there to take P4 back, so uh, he's clearly not feeling too hurt about it. He's now a disastrous fate, half a second up the road in P3, so uh, either maybe yeah. Nene has let him go on straight away, or Tilly Winks just thought, I'm not wasting any time behind this guy. <laughs> Not wasting any time. Uh, back at the back, just a quick shout to J-Lo. He just drops it a little bit uh, into 30s, and this has allowed WDK to make a move on him there. OK, so WDK will be up into P11, I assume, then. That's correct. We've got the, the very kind of beginnings of a train starting to form here. I think just behind Gina Quinney, we've got a Sergeant... We've got a, so Dalton in 7th, and Sergeant Cullen trying to catch back up to them in 8th place. We know Chris Arthur 9 is going to be driving like a bat out of hell all evening, so we can surely see him on uh, the end of this train shortly. But uh, <laughs> Roadrunner Dan has just joined us in the comments. Wow, Squidgy. hello Roadrunner. We've got uh, Squidgy and uh, Waxter <laughs> in the comments with us tonight. Um, but as you said, the Quinny, I think it's just let Dalton go, so maybe, as you say, Quinny is going to try and play the long game. He's short shifting that Evo as well. So maybe he's happy just to let that Audi go and have him back in the pit stops. They're probably due another five minutes. Yeah, for sure. I'll just hang on to the back of these guys. Unless you can get a definite move, so you don't waste your tyres at all. Um, just keep the him threat he's going to have, though, is Sergeant Cullen behind him, just a touch more fuel and medium tyres. So those are gonna so hopefully they're going to work together, I'd assume, but uh, you never know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, uh, as I say, Quinny um, is definitely on the same strategy as Cullen, just on the different tyres. Um, yes, Dan, it is with Langster. I've got a, a new commentary pal because you went AWOL for about three years. <laughs> um, we've got uh, Dalton's just gone off there and we've got Quinny making the move and Colin just behind. Oh, well, it's been contact. Oh, Dalton's gone sideways. Oh, right into the gravel there at Sheen Curve. That is a big off there. Colin's gone past. Chris Arthur and Knight has gone past. And Matthew Francis. What's happened there to Dalton? Let's get a replay. So he went wide there, and uh, that allowed Quinny up the inside. And it, oh, Quinny's not left in the space, it must be said. Maybe he thought I he left in more than there was, but Dalton had nowhere to go. We've had a disconnect. A disconnect? Who with? Um, we've, so Nene's disconnected. I think we may have the same thing that's happened in the first race. Let's just keep an eye out, out here for... Yeah, there we go. Nene yeah. dropped out. Nene has gone. That is very unfortunate. He was doing so well before, but uh, these things do happen. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, that puts us down to a field of 11 drivers. But as I say there, I think, to be fair, Quinny didn't leave him any space on the outside of the track, and Dalton, even if he tried to slow down, would still have been on the grass. We've so got I the battle for P1 between Chris Char and Mad Lad on the pad here I'm at the moment. Just watching it now. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it is heating up over here. But maybe... Uh, get my buttons back, fit the lag has messed that up a little bit. There we go, we'll jump on board uh, with the mad lad on the pad, uh, the artist formerly known as Willie D, as he hunts down Chris Charlotte for P1. Of course, we've got Lexus Power, Mitsubishi Power, down at Clearways. Who's got more power? It seems to be the Lexus. He's just pulling away in the traction zones, but we know the mad lad on the pad is an absolute demon through the corners, right on the ass, oh, bottom of that diffuser there. Looking for a move of the inside, no dice. Chris will defend, watch the outside. Chris is still gonna defend, but is there a little bit of a cutback on? No, there's nothing there at all. 
Uh, we've got Zino in the comments saying, uh, Squid Langster, love the commentary. Is this the day that Lexus gets a win? What do you think, Langster? Oh, there's every chance that Lexus could get a win, being Zeno's favourite choice of manufacturer as well. But um, Mad Lad on the pad, hot on his heels at the moment. We'll see he is hot on his heels, but not as hot as those front tyres. They are looking absolutely cooked, especially that front left. Yeah, for sure. But uh, the battle that's going to be looking for P1 is definitely between Quinny. And Sergeant Coleman has just made the move around Druids there on him. Ah, so now we have to see maybe if he can get the better of them again. Those medium tyres, he will have uh, the lasting advantage in terms of grip, I think but we know that Quinny's been saving the soft tyres very well and actually looking at his tyre wear it's almost identical on a softer compact tyre which really is a commendable effort from him maybe the traction control handicap isn't as much of one as we thought yeah the traction control handicap definitely worked in his favour to save the tyres but if you watch his braking he's braking a little bit earlier and lighter which is definitely saving the front end of that car we spoke to we spoke to Willie D uh, in his interview and he said that TC2 was definitely uh, not helping him at all so maybe Quinny is just using the traction control just to save the tyres as you say and I think the lighter braking is definitely helping him uh, but one person that's also helping is behind him Chris R390 again on the rampage he's got some very worn tyres that he's probably due a pit stop this lap or next but uh, he could be well within a shot um, of at least I'd say uh, or saying if he keeps a P5 knowing that Matthew France behind him probably the pit as well and Dalton in the front wheel drive Audi I don't think he's going to see much better than P7 yeah, I think the only person that may catch a P5, let's have a quick look at the timings here. Yeah, so we, disastrous fate would, would slot into P5 if I only keeps it clean. And then Mr. Tigley Rink as well is in for P5 at the moment. It seems a fate must have made a pit. Oh, there's a little bit of contact there possibly from him and Tiddly Wink. They are very dicey there through the last corner. <laughs> the interesting the disastrous fate with the semi full tank of fuel and the new soft mm -hmm. tyres. Has he misjudged this one? Because it doesn't look like he's driving particularly conservatively. You can see on the bottom of the display there, he's going full lock through every corner. So he's really well, throwing that Scirocco around. He proved me wrong slightly in the previous race. He managed to go until pretty much the last lap before the tyres started really dropping off. And he only lost one position out of it at the end of the day. So we'll see if it works into his hands this time round. That's true. And to be fair, I can see as well, he's using second gear just to get the car to dip into the corners and then back up into third to pull his way out of the corner so I guess he yeah. is trying to save those fronts as well but Tiddlywink is, is still yeah. all over him I would let Tiddlywink go at this point because Tiddlywink's going to obviously got the better tyres and uh, car to save them tyres as well and instead of defending so heavy just let Tiddlywink go and the tyres will last longer throughout the rest well, of the well you say that but Tiddlywink oh well, I've just pressed the wrong button get away get away Tiddlywink has just dropped it onto the gravel there so uh I think he would have been better letting him go, but in fact, it's probably better to stay out. Uh, Chris Char has dived into the pits there, uh, presumably to fill up with fuel, maybe to try and undercut the Mad Lad on the pad. So this is going to be an exciting final stint for these two. Yeah, I didn't see, quite see the gap, what it was when he went into the pits, but um, Mad Lad's definitely going to be losing a chunk of time staying out on his tyres, and this may play into Chris Char's hands. Chris Char has emerged, just over half a tank of fuel, a fresh set of soft, but crucially, not immediately in traffic. He's just behind Chris R390 in P5, about second and a half air gap. So that is going to give him plenty of space to set a nice clean outlap. Uh, meanwhile, just ahead of him there, uh, Chris R390 in P4, still following Colon and Quinney, who again go for that conservative strategy. Chris, he's going to have to jump into the pits again. But the question is, has Chris Char got the pace to catch up uh, to the two snails, uh, if he were the rabbit in this instance? Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, the way he's racing at the moment, it's, um, it's all to play for. He's only two seconds down off the back of um, Sergeant Colon at the moment, with uh, once Chris has obviously boxed. Uh, Chris is obviously, Chris Charles is obviously going to have to make some moves though against the two defensive drivers. Yeah, he's definitely going to play for, but I'm sure we're going to see Quinny and Colon uh, take P1 and 2 respectively, but he's 21 seconds behind Mad Lad as he moves into the pits there yeah. on the top of your radar there on the screen. He's 21 seconds enough. We know he's not going to fill all the way. He saved just a touch of fuel as well. It's going to be tight, I think, as he crosses the finish line. Yeah, I think he's going to fall out behind Chris Char in this instance. I'm going to jump on board there with the Mad Lad himself. As he refuels, Quinny and Colin are just over, going over the line now, as is Chris Char. He's leaving the pits right now. It's going to be close. But he's just been undercut there 
by Chris, and now it's going to count. If that one lap fresher tyre is going to make the difference. He's put a substantial amount more fuel in as well, so a good 10-15% more fuel. Yeah, obviously he's not comfortable with how much fuel we require for the remaining amount of this race because there's only seven and a half minutes. So that equates to around about another five laps remaining. It does, but I think maybe he's also, with the Evo, we've got to really rev the hell out of fourth gear to get it to move in fifth. I think he just wants that extra fuel that he can burn to get into the power band again. He's also been very aggressive there, almost drifting it uh, through 30s. But he's only half a second now off the back of Chris, so whatever he's doing, he's making it work. Yes, um, it's definitely all to play for with the top four drivers here. We don't know who's going to come into onto the podiums. Uh, Mad Lad on the podium has got a great shout. He's got to get the moves done as quick as possible to put him to work there. Well, that is two tenths in one corner. Chris Charles got oh. on the gravel, and that is a move of the inside for Mad Lad, and he needed it done early. I pressed the replay button again, I'm a blooming idiot. <laughs> Mad Lad makes it through to P3 better sooner than later. And uh, now the question is, can he gain those two and a half seconds on the leading pair? Yeah, for sure. He's catching uh, Sergeant Cohn on there at a rate of knots. Um, it should dispatch him within the next couple of corners. See, well, I want to jump back and see what's happening with the guys behind it. So I see a battle going on there uh, through Sterling's, but I know I see Madlad look for a move on the outside of Sergeant oh, Cohen, or at least late cutback. Madlad He's with holding the pace it. Going the outside. Oh, and he is a clean as you like around the outside. I thought he was going to run it off into the gravel there, but now he's made that stick. That's an incredible piece of driving there. We know Sergeant Cohen saving fuel as we cut to our replay here. Uh, Cohen defending to the inside as you would expect, but mad lad. <laughs> what are the clues in the name? Sends it all the way around the outside. Not a hint of a contact and just a hint of a lift. P2, one and a half seconds left to Gina Quinney. It really is anyone's game to play for here. Yeah, it's been some incredible driving with Mad Lad on the pad. As you say, it's quite right. It, it, the clue's in the name here. Willie D is now known as Mad Lad on the pad. Truly is the Mad Lad. I'm going to jump back just a moment, though. I think uh, Fate and Tiddywink are also having a little bit of a quarrel here in uh, P5 and 6. I think Tiddywink has now got the edge on him. We saw Fate uh, earlier having to squabble, and Tiddywink did go off at Hawthorne, so they only met a lap or two ago. Um, but it's getting that time back and then some. He's 1.3 up on Disastrous Fate, whose front tyres are now starting to feel the burn. The mad lad's within one second now with um, Ginny Quinney now, and he, he, as he looks to make the move in the next lap or two. Okay, I can't see many more fights going on, on the radar, so I'm going to jump oh, back to mad lad. Oh, he's just got on the gravel. Ooh, I just caught it on the edge of the shot there. It's only cost him maybe, what, three tenths or so, but he's got another three or so laps left in the back, so he might as well see a, a late, late grab for the podium. Between he's, been lucky, he's lucky, <laughs> boys, there, especially being in the four-wheel drive car, that's what saved him, because if he was in rear-wheel drive, that car was spinning all day long. Oh, I agree. We've seen uh, Chris Char lose it once or twice in the Lexus already today. We know those rear-wheel drives are prone to a bit of a sideways action there. But uh, Mad Lad really had to put the effort in now. Despite that off, he's still up on his previous best time. So maybe this is uh, the fuel and soft tyre crossover point here as uh, we head through our last five minutes. He's two tenths purple and now in the slipstream of Gina Quinney. Let's see what this Evo's got against its sister car heading down Pilgrim's Drop. Looking at the same distance, Chris Charles and Sergeant Colon as well for the Battle for P3 is um, another one that's unfolding as well at its precise time. So it could be all change for the front four drivers, but of course there's only three spots on the podium. What is Sergeant Cohen going to have in the bag against Chris Char? We know he's not quite had that fight with Quinney in terms of saving uh, the resources, the tyres and the fuel. But now he's going to have to be a little bit more aggressive if he wants to keep that Lexus off of the podium. Well, maybe not that aggressive though, he's just dipped a tyre onto the dirt there. So we can see, I think, uh, Mad Lad trying to get in the mirrors there of Quinney had to jump to the front of the pack, but no dice here. He's had a great exit though through the final corner to so cut to the inside of Quinney. Please don't push him oh, oh, right onto the dirt there. That's as close as you can. But Mad Lad's still on the there. inside line. Break as hard as he can. Quinney's looking for the cut back, but he's just not got the momentum. Mad Lad takes P1 by the skin of his teeth. That's so close there. And we shuffle yes. back. Charlie Cohen having to defend from Chris Char. On the inside there of Druids, there's no passing lane on the inside there, but these two are getting very close together now. So still holding the tight side there through Graham Hill Bend, using all of the runoff exit there. 
but uh, I think if Chris Sharpton lines one up nicely, he's only half a second behind. We could see a move uh, down towards Hawthorns. Let's see. He's made a half. He's made two tenths on the exit already. Three tenths, and he will have this move before they even get to the gantry. Easy pass there by Chris Char, and I think Colin's going to have to let that one go for today. A good effort by him to save the fuel and tires, but it's I mean, just not paid off. Make a move on Mad Lad, at the, uh, Mad Lad on the pad at the front of the pack here again. It's sticking it to him. I'll jump back to that one then as they head uh, through. Chinkov always oh, just clipped the grass here with his rear tyre, but he's kept it in a straight line. And yeah, that four wheel drive really is uh, saving some of the drivers here today. But I'm not too sure if Quinn's going to have enough left in the bag to really compete. We know that a mad lad has got about another 20% more fuel, I'd say. And uh, I'd say probably just slightly better tyres. Having said that, though, actually, uh, mad lad's tyres are actually more or less the same, if not slightly worse. I think mad lad's tyres are now slightly worse. This, this could play to Quinn's hands, especially the difference where one's on the pad and one's on the wheel. We're, the series has got to happen in this final two laps now. As we say, if you're joining us, joining us late, Quinny pitted uh, within the first after the first 10 minutes to put on a full tank of fuel and a fresh set of softs, and he's managed them to perfection. So he might just have a little bit left in reserve to snatch the win off of Willie D. They're both running wide there, and uh, this will be, uh, I think, the second to last lap with the pace that they're on. So I think uh, it might just be a, a top two shootout for the win as we look behind. Colon and Chris are still going at it. Colon has taken P3 back off of Chris Char, but has run very wide there uh, through Surtees. And uh, it looks like Chris Char's going to try and have another go at him down the hill. We saw him do it once before. Uh, Colon this time defended to the outside. And uh, Chris Char's now got the blinking red fuel, so he can be very careful here. I think he'll have enough to make it to the end of the lap. But to make sure he hasn't got to do another one, because if he does, he's not going to make that final 20th lap. Having said that, Culling runs wide. Chris Char on the inside now through Dingle Dell. This is going to be very tight through Sheen Curve. Are they going to be side by side here? Colin's still on the outside. They're hanging around the outside. There is contact. I think Colon, though, still on the outside. That is incredibly bold driving. Yeah, he, he, he planted it well there, just to hold on to it. And uh, great respect from Chris there, allowing racing room. When you get back to the front of the pack, though, you've got 15 seconds over the line, so this should be the final lap for these two at the front. Quinny's lost it on the side of the track. He's oh, it's so painful. Oh, he's gonna, is he going to drop the podium places here? He's we just got caught his rear left on the grass, heading through Paddock Hill Bend. Where Sergeant Curl, he's in P3, just heading down Paddock Hill himself. Mr. Tilly will take a P5 there, um, heading around the last corner. Looks like Zelsha's fate is just going to hold off. Chris R390 for P6 and 7 respectively. Uh, where's Owen Dalton? He is down in P8. He's crossing the line just now. Matthew Francis will take P9. And Jared should take P10. WDK should take P11. So we we'll jump back, I think, to our battling uh, for third place. I think, uh, with all due respect to them, first and second is pretty much a foregone conclusion. But we can still see anything here on the cards for... P3 and 4, you can see Chris Char on the bottom left of your screen there, it's really starting to push that fuel to its limits. The tyres are holding up, but I'm not sure he's going to afford to catch up to Colin. And I think Quinny might be having to save now as well. We can see him at the front of our shot there from the bumper of Chris Char. He's just not quite reeling in, Sergeant Colin. You can see the delta there is increasing rather than decreasing. Maybe uh, Chris knows he's got a save now. To be fair, Tilly Wink isn't going to be overtaking him anytime soon. But uh, you've got to feel bad for Chris. He really had a great race on the cards there. Uh, Mad Lad, we missed him over the line there, takes the win. Gina Quinn, he's so unfortunate, but he pushed Mad Lad to the very end. A well-deserved P2 for him and for Colon as well, over the line in third. A fantastic result for him. But uh, there's your winner, Mad Lad on a pad. Great racing by all there. Great uh, shout out to Mad Lad on the pad for the victory there. And uh, Quinny and Sergeant Colon did fantastic doing the one stop strategy there. It worked, really worked in their favour. Just um, playing it safe and finishing where they had fun. And what a sight that is for, uh, for Mad Lad to see the end of his race there. Up 11 places and the fastest lap to boot. That's the kind of thing you only dream of as a racer. Uh, and I believe we spoke to Mad Lad earlier. Um, but I think worth having a chat with uh, with Quinny because yeah, he was sure, very Quinny. close there so we're going to dive into the party with him I'll be back with you in a moment lanky boy okay mate
so I've pushed it a little bit. Good evening, everybody. You're live with Amigos. Please do not right, swear. Well, uh, have we got Quinny in the chat? Hello, mate. How are you doing? All well here, Quinny. How about yourself? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Uh, now, I must, I must apologise first. I had my had some serious doubts that you were going to be able to take soft set of tyres for 20 minutes of racing, but you did extremely well, and you were pushing Mad Lad all the way to the line. What's going through your mind on that second to last lap where you were so close? Um, I thought I'd uh, try my best to put him under a bit of pressure and see if I could force him into a mistake, and instead I just clipped my rear end and that spun me around. Um, I'll, I'll pump me on the gravel. It's um, it's been a tough night tonight. I had a, a mare in race one, and that was a bit of a, a mess around with different tyres, and halfway through restarting the second, and then my, my brake pedal was stuck on. I was braking all the way around, so I dropped back and dropped and back, started again front back, and I couldn't set off from the line because my brake pedal was stuck on. So I had to turn the steering wheel off, turn it all back on, reload it, and then we set up near the front for this. But it was uh, t tough work keeping uh, Mad Lad under control tonight. He, he were a uh. his own. Well, that, that explains it then. Langston and I were wondering why you were so slow to, sl so, slow to set off in that uh, second yeah. second round. But uh, of course, good to see you make a comeback there. And uh, you really provide some exciting racing all the way to the end. So congrats on a, a well-deserved P2 after a nightmarish round four. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Squid. And uh, of course, to everyone else who has been racing tonight, thanks for putting on another amazing show for myself and Langston and the people at home. And, uh, well, I guess we're looking forward to round five, which, uh, if I check my information here, should take us to uh, Sardinia, or Squidenia, as it's known in the RT community. Uh, so, thanks for the racing, everybody. We hope to be in touch with you soon. Take care of yourselves. See you, guys. Right, well, uh, with our final interview done for this evening, um, I guess what's left to do is say goodbye and uh, give our farewells. So, again, a massive thank you to uh, my co-host, ART Langster. He's done a fantastic job, second time on the mic. I wouldn't share it with anyone else. Uh, it's been a pleasure again to have me. Uh, thanks for having me again, Squid. It's, um, sounds like we're both full of cold or hay fever, one of the two, <laughs> but uh, it's worked out for having two of us in the commentary box this evening. It's been a long Two and a half hours thinking this evening, but the race has been utterly fantastic again. Well, well uh, I wouldn't want to be sniffly with anyone else. <laughs> At least we share the love. Uh, absolutely. If it's contagious, it's just us two. Okay, well, in that case, we're going to call it a night there. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We hope to see you next Monday night for round five of the Touring Car Championship taking place at Sardinia. Um, I've been your host, Super Squid. Have a lovely Monday evening and a wonderful rest of your week. Take care.